time to take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board, remember which page you're on, or keep track of all the moves you miss. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess enthusiasts at chessable.com. Chessable, take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Welcome to the final of the World Cup. We finally got here and uh, it is Sergei Kayakin today, white against the hero of uh, yesterday, Jan Shistov Duda. Rubenstein, Nidov, Ryshevsky, if you like. Uh, the Poles now have a new hero, uh, Jan Shistov Duda. Uh, Yes, young Krzysztof was also playing against the local hero, Sergei Karakin, Absolutely. who won the World Cup already once. You know, he has a record number of uh, the semifinals and finals now, probably. So, um, what do you think about this well, match, uh, uh, I think it will be very, very tense. I uh, think it may well go to, to a tie break, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, but we shall see. Um, and um, if it does go to a, a tie break, I don't think uh, Duda will be unhappy with that, although they are both good, uh, really good at, at fast speeds. You know, Nigel, I analyze their games. These players know each other well, but somehow they almost never played in classical time control. They drew at the World Chess Olympiad, but they've played numerous games uh, online and especially two matches. Uh, yes. The last one was won convincingly, convincingly by Duda. Uh, so it was already a warning for yes. Greg, and maybe he yes. should put a lot of pressure in classical games. Yeah, but he's on home soil here, and... Um, I don't know how much, it's not quite the advantage it is in, in football when you have the crowd cheering you on, but uh, there are some advantages in, in that. And on your screen, playing with white pieces, is Vladimir Fedeseev against the world champion Magnus Carlsen. Let us not forget about the third place playoff, so that's why we are uh, seeing them. So that is an important match in its own right, and uh, we will certainly uh, be also pay paying plenty of attention to that. This is a very unusual role for Magnus Carlsen, uh, well, playing for <laughs> third place, but somehow he took... Supporting act. <laughs> supporting act, yes, best supporting <laughs> actor, certainly. Uh, but um, I was um, so touched uh, by his champion spirit, uh, especially after mm, the round yesterday, he congratulated both finalists and he took it with a lot of, well, of good, grace. Gra good grace and humor. He said that 
uh, this is his new jam. Like yeah. Some, what is our new jam? <laughs> <laughs> it's <just> strawberry. <laughs> strawberry. <laughs> but uh, I noticed uh, uh, some of uh, Magnus's uh, comments, and he also, uh, and I think this was part of it, uh, that uh, he felt that th this would also put him in good stead for later on in the year, where, of course, um, he will be defending his world championship t title in Dubai against uh, Jan Nepomneci. Still, uh, apologies he, for my pronunciation. Nepomneci. It's a tricky. He doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't lose very often. You know yes. that was such a great performance uh, from Jan Krzysztof Duda. But I, I really um, feel that uh, the world champion reacted with elegance, and um, well. We will see what will happen during his well this match and during the World Championship match later this year. So let's get um, to the games. Yes, we still have one ritual. Yes. Oh yes, fulfill. we've got <laughs> the the sponsors, and I will leave it to you, Almira, to uh, announce the sponsors. Yes, today I had uh, a bit of time, so uh, well, even though I rewrite <laughs> those things quite often, so let's have a look at. Um, at our board uh, behind us, and I would like to. It's a small ode to our sponsors. Okay. Yes? Uh, so here we are with great aplomb reciting sponsors like Gazprom. The world will know that they're there and soon will have one per square. C'est merveilleux, would say Molière. Yes, chess is hype. They can't resist. Fasagre and Nornickel are next on our list. They love the game, they worship knights, and these are our daily rides. Uh, we thank them just before the round and hope that they will stick around. That is brilliant. That is <laughs> the best poetry I've heard since Dr. Seuss. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, this, this is one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Seuss is, is simply, uh, he's a genius. Yes. So, <laughs> so let's, anyway, let's there you get are. it started. The, 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 the sponsors. And now to the chess. <laughs> okay. So. <gasps> oh, Sergei Karakin is repeating the line Magnus Carlsen played against yes. the young sister. So uh, let's have a look. Here, with some uh, novinka. Not really, because uh, as I remember, well, in the game uh, which was played by Magnus Carlsen, he played Queen E2 in this yes. tournament, but he beat Young Shishtov before with Queen A4. Oh, that's interesting. So let me check just okay. a second. I'm pretty sure uh, that this and is the line. The mm -hmm. Yes, please have this. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so let's... Uh, okay, let's go one move at a time. Mm -hmm. So uh, d4. So uh, here you have this. Um, what do they call it? The schnitzel, schnitzel variation, isn't it? It's kind of a Vienna. But it's uh, on the other hand, it looks like uh, Queen's Gambit yeah, I, accepted, I, I, but a very somebody strange will tell version. A, somebody will tell this, me uh, what so this is called. So I would call it a, a, a Vienna, but I, that's probably not right. Mm -hmm. um, so it's this very, very trendy pawn sacrifice where white gives up a, an important central pawn for development. And as we have discussed on previous days, uh, it's exceptionally dangerous to, um, to uh, mm -hmm. capture this, uh, where white has a huge attack for two pawns. So. That one is certainly uh, not really uh, recommended. And knight f6, and, and here we are. Queen a4 check. This is the, the move mm -hmm. that Almira uh, referred to. Uh, it's a forcing continuation. So uh, it was played by Magnus Carlsen against Young Shishtov in 95, uh, rook b8. Um, Rook d1 was played in this game, but uh, what I wanted to mention is this also shows how, uh, well, the elite player prepares. So yes. they, <coughs> Sergei Karakin in his seconds spotted that Young Shishtov Duda uh, is going almost uh, well, exclusively, exclusively for, this, yes. uh, for this line. Yes. So we saw that 
before he tried e4, Sergei Karakin, mm. d4, so it depends, you know, mm. uh, on his opponent's repertoire. Mm. So uh, they're going for this line, and what was the move uh, which was but, played? But um, I would, would just say something mm -hmm. about this. Uh, the, 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 there is high risk with this strategy. Um, he who lives by the sword dies by the sword. And uh, this is Jan Shishtov's, um idea. He scores a lot of points by playing these hugely theoretical lines, and he's confident that um, he has uh, analyzed these well enough. But so maybe there is some little nuance here and there. I, I wanted also to show you one little variation before we okay. uh, yes we move on with the game. You know, Rook D1 of course was played by uh, Magnus Carlsen here, but then I noticed that D5 exists in this position. Uh -huh. So you go um, for a very concrete line, then E takes D5. Pourquoi? Mm -hmm. Knight D5 or okay. yes, Knight D5, then Knight C6 here. Yeah. Uh, B takes C6. Uh, queen c6. Uh, this looks quite dangerous, but hopefully this bishop it doesn't protects look, uh, it doesn't look this that square. It doesn't oh, look that dangerous, does and it? And then queen d7. Okay. So this um, this is oh. the line. So queen d5 and castle oh. here. Okay, yeah, it was it looks played by Mamedyarov against Caruana. So it looks, what looks, do you think? It looks pretty unimpressive to me. Now I, that I, you know I, that they're exchanging the queens, but are they going to play against the, yeah, these two well, pawns I here? I would have thought this is far too slender an advantage to really cause mm -hmm. uh, serious trouble. Okay, so uh, Sergei starts with knight c6. I have a few games, of course, here. Uh, maybe these are... Uh, okay, play, played by Valentina Gunina and uh, Daniel Yufa. Recently, so knight c6, bishop takes c6. Hmm. Sorry, b takes c6. Uh, yes, b, b takes c6 and rook d1. Rook d1. Okay, this seems to be a novelty. Okay, so Let's what is his idea? And maybe he wants to do something as simple as capture on a7. Mm -hmm. Because normally, as in the other line, you would take queen c6, then queen d7. Okay. And you will have so, so this looks like, queens. you know, perhaps a, a more ambitious way of playing. Because I'm thinking that he may want to uh, just capture that apple um, and try and run. And, th and then you really would have a uh, significant advantage in terms of pawn structure. Okay, so rook d1 was played, and um, but your queen could be lost there, if, let's say. Uh, well, I don't see why. But if I play a simple move, just I yeah. can I can castle, of course. You but can. If you I can. if I will start with bishop d7, just to uh, to protect this pawn, and then, well, if you take it's a draw. Yes, <laughs> at least. Yes. So. Yes, so you've got so you're some not minimum, this minimum line, uh, draw. Bishop d7 is passive. Of I, th I think the the idea would be to play bishop g5 mm -hmm. there. I'm trying to, th to think that this would be the way to go about things. Okay. Ah, and then if I'll play h6, simply I, I, bishop I, I, h4. I can, I can even take... I can even ah, take... And then you want to take on a7 and then if I, I will want take, to take on okay. a7. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is hanging, this is hanging, yes. And I don't have time. Uh, well, I, sh I will waste yes. one tempo and, on rook c Perhaps bishop a6 is a good response to that as well. To, to which one? Well, to rook c8. Ah, yes, yes. No, no. I, I think that's castle here, but then uh, queen c7. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So why right. would mm -hmm. be on top? He's played bishop d7. Very good. 
No, but it's. Just, I thought that this would be the first move, you know, to explain. Uh, well, like uh, the first move I would. Our audience, uh, well, yes, I would the, the, consider the first, castling. The first yes, move yeah. I would consider would be castling, yes. but you know, but that's uh, that is a different uh, approach. Okay, let's see. That would just be, you know, if I'd be playing blitz chess, I would see lots of weak pawns. Okay, n now I'll just castle. Mm -hmm. He can't take all of my pawns at the same time. He can only <laughs> take one of them. So let's get not waste time. I've got to castle sooner or later. So do it now. Nigel, he was faced with a novelty, and yet he spent like a few minutes, uh, young Shishtov Duda, on his move, bishop d7. He spent a few minutes. Yes, a few minutes only, you know, like in this line. Both players have yes, uh, a little bit less than 1.30 on their clocks. So how would you explain this? Is he still uh, with I think, in his uh, preparation? I, I think he would have looked at this previously. Mm -hmm. um, he may not have l looked at it in, in great detail. Sometimes people are trying to familiarize themselves. Uh, Refamiliarize themselves with the the ideas that, uh, and it could be a while ago that he looked at it. You never know. Okay, so I just wanted to show you the position um, in the game between Vladimir Fedosev and Magnus Carlsen. Vladimir Fedosev went for h4. Here Cave once again. Caveman attack. <laughs> once again. <laughs> I, have uh, I have their statistics as well. Okay. So they played only one classical game in vacancy like a few years ago. Uh, actually, um, um, Magnus played the Grunfeld in that mm -hmm. game. And okay. Do we, is that all we have? Yes, that's all we have oh, for the moment. Sure? Magnus Carlsen is still thinking. Or at least that's all I have on my. Uh, Yes, on my board, yes. Maybe we we'll can just go a bit uh, closer because we'll I'm, a, a, closer I'm a bit... Uh, circumspect. If we, can, if we can move over to the... Uh, with a view of the other game, that would be nice because our, I can't believe they've only played three moves. It's not that unusual. Two and a half. Two and a half. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, so. But th then I'm um, thinking because, of course, we saw also um, uh, in the match between Sam Shankland and Peter Swidler that you can go for uh, the King's Indian structure, but you also go uh, for the Benoni. Maxim Vashila Graf, right. for example, mm -hmm. he, uh, he chooses uh, c5 here. So. Oirup Eshek said h4. Crime de les majesté. Crime de les majesté. Yes, the crime of less majesty, <laughs> as we say in English. <laughs> because like many things, we lack good expressions for them in our own language. <laughs> but uh, let's read the chat, of course. Thank you so much for your messages. Uh, now we are probably having this, uh, you know, like in football, this... Uh, Half of the stadium is Polish and half of the stadium is Russian. Uh, yes. So we are. I know that um, in Poland this match is watched. I think by th more than twenty thousand viewers per day. They're supporting Young Shishtov, but I cannot even imagine how many are following and supporting Sergey. Yes. So please let us know who are you supporting in the chat, and uh, who are French for. What do you think? <laughs> I don't know. Gosh. <laughs> we will find out. Yes. So let's see if uh, Magnus will go for c5. Um, then you can go for d5, d6. But even b5 is possible here, I think. Uh, yes. What do you think? Well, I think that's Can we that's make uh, use of this? Now, tell me, what, is, the, what is this uh, opening generally called? Uh, I mean, ignore the h4 bit. What, what do you call that? Oh, I forgot. You're, you're from the Soviet Union. So tell me what it's, what it's called. You mean uh, with B5? B5, yes. B5, mm -hmm. yes. CB5. I have blank in my mind because I'm thinking about the side variation. Okay. I thought it was a new poem you were thinking. No, 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 no. Which about. one is this? Uh, I thought they called it the Volga Gambit. No, the Volga Gambit, no, but I, I was asking, I thought that you were going for No, no, I mean, and, and 
Not the Volga. Paul Benko calls it the Benko Gambit, you know, or he did. <laughs> uh, no, no, actually, I was thinking that you were asking me uh, this sideline. It has a particular name and I have a blank. Blumenfeld. Yes, Blumenfeld, yes. Good Jewish this, opening. Yes, Blumenfeld. Blumenfeld, yes, because I yes. was Volga Gambit, of course, it was obvious, but uh, yes, in this, uh, you know, it reminds me of the Blumenfeld. Oh, so you do, could, you did call it the Volga Gambit. Yes, and, uh, of course. And not the Benko. No, 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 no of course, that's, yes. you see, ah, that's, that's what the, you wanted to know, That is it. That's the Russian propaganda, for, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that's, you're part of that. Okay, so um, I wanted to show you... Um, we had a discussion the, the other evening. So just a second. With about the, uh, the names that they gave to these openings in the, in the Soviet Union. And, so there, there, and there are several of them where, you know, they have perfectly good names, but of course the, the, the Russians had to name it after some Russian, <laughs> you know. <laughs> What I wanted to show you is just um, a small part of the game between Alexander Grishuk and Maxim Vashilagrav. So uh, we have no more moves for the moment. Okay. So uh, b5, cb5, a6, like in the spirit of the uh, Volga Gambit and the Blumenfeld. But here, uh, bishop g7 was played. Uh, sorry, e3. Mm -hmm. uh, bishop g7. Knight c3. Castle. And H5. Three, yes, D6. Why did he not well, go he, H5? Well, that's why actually to, what I wanted why, to show. No, I want to... Oh, come on. If you're going to play like that, I mean, at this point, if this would be Simon Williams, he would play H5. I mean, he doesn't care. That's why he loses a lot of games. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he shoves Harry, Harry the H-pawn, up the board. And, um, I mean, he doesn't care. I mean, this is just swinging the axe at mm -hmm. the opponent. And I would do that. I really would, because, you know, what else are you? I mean, you're playing age four. You're going to pretend you, uh, that it's a good positional move. No, it's not. It only makes sense to, to play it like this. Oh, I'm serious. Well, I understand, but maybe um, in this type of positions with... Um the well Volga sort of Benoni structure, then maybe uh, it's not so useful because I'm going to open the center very quickly, and your bishop is only one mm -hmm. for the moment. I don't know, but Magnus was thinking for a long time, and he went for uh, the King's Indian. So, <coughs> is he going to put mm -hmm. his knight on c6? It was actually Peter Swidler's recommendation in okay, his Okay, there's in a comment class. here. The Volga Gambit is much older than the Bengo Gambit. The idea with G6 forms the Bengo Gambit. Isn't this with G6? Weren't we with G6? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. You're so <laughs> you have your twisted mind. Sorry? <laughs> your twisted mind. <laughs> no, well, because we have G6, so it looks <laughs> like a Benko to me. <laughs> And what I wanted to talk was about Blumenfeld anyway. Oh, right. So. <laughs> okay. So you were talking about Blumenfeld. Okay. So uh, we are still in the opening phase here. Um, okay. Let me have a look if uh, Magnus will choose um, knight c6 if he ever played his line, this line, actually. <laughs> Somebody saying, honestly, I once heard a man say that the Sicilian opening was named after a Russian called Sicilian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a nice comment. Yes. So E4, um... Everyone claims everything. Actually, yes. Magnus played one game against <laughs> Maxim Vashelograph, okay, with roles inversed on, online. Mm -hmm. And he went for um, the classical plan. So castle, bishop b2, e5. And this is a really castle, interesting. Bishop b2 in yes. order to push h5, of course. And then he went. This is a e5. wonderful digression. I'm loving it, Almira. But <laughs> it's not very much close to the position that we've got. No, I, I uh, carry on, please, because I find it very interesting. 
these are the ideas, you know, we're looking at similar positions with, with H4. I mean, they're, they're not... Strangely, yes. Yeah, and, and, and it's a very, enough, very weird way yes, of playing. Very, yes, exactly. That's what I wanted to show. And only here, Maxim yeah. pushed H5. Yeah, and his idea is to take some space mm -hmm. and to play H6 uh, here at some point. So this is interesting. And, of course, Peter Swidler have, has played this line. Peter Swidler. Yes. Yes. So uh, he lost against Sam Shankland here. And mm. before, uh, oh, also, let's see. His improvement over that game was uh, something like this. Castle, bishop b2, and he played h5. So oh, well, this is how okay. this game can develop. You can also play it in, in the classical, traditional way, play but knight c6, c5, or knight d7. That five. way, that, that would be inviting a bishop to appear to on g5, uh, on g5 mm -hmm. very clearly. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Good. So back to our final, and it seems that... Uh, <laughs> And above, Gossel says, obviously, Sicilian is named after an Indian. <laughs> what, what, what nonsense. <laughs> well, it and there will be multiple claims of this ilk, I think, pouring in on the chat. Where are the Greeks? Where are the Greeks? Yes. <laughs> They're on holiday. They're at the beach at the moment. And that's where I will be on a yes. Greek beach in uh, a but couple actually, of days time <laughs> what i like about this is it reminds me of course of the ancient times where greeks were gathering in the how do you say agora or agora yeah so, agora yes yeah. and they were having philosophical political social debates all together with so the great philosopher nigel short here yes. we are <laughs> um sergey karakin is still thinking yeah so that's Curious because um, it it makes me think about this because mm -hmm. uh, I believe he expected castles um, just instead of bishop d7. It was interesting that you favoured bishop d7 immediately. Uh, because I, I, I you gave me your idea. Yeah, well, that's I, what I said to myself. I, I okay, think, let's try bishop d7. I think uh, castles, it's probably the first line of the engine, and he was ready. And sometimes, you know, people, they're not so well prepared when you, you start dropping. If you're down to the third line or the fourth choice of, of an engine, and you just uh, suddenly realize, well, you know, I prepared this line beforehand, mm -hmm. but I, I've been expecting that uh, he would do something else and something else would, would come. Okay, let's try bishop g5. Well, bishop then. g5 is mm -hmm. completely normal. Um, but is there any ways uh, for me to avoid this line? H ah, but why can't I castle them? Can I do so? Uh, you, you could. So knight, and knight, knight e4? 94. And bishop e7. Bishop e7, yes. and probably I'm going to take that. I'm going to take on take f6. On, ah, f6, okay. No, 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 with no, the bishop? no, no, no. Take okay. with the bishop. Mm -hmm. And knight c5? And I'm just wondering, could I play queen takes uh, c7 there? A7? a7? Sorry, mm -hmm. I'm jumping ahead a couple of moves. In my mind. Ah, so you're planning bishop b3 here, yes? Something uh, like this. Possibly. Or oh, I was even considering knight takes f6 check. I don't need mm -hmm. to. I could go bishop b3. And I could, incidentally, I could do something else. I could play a4. I could just start pushing that ah, you pawn mean immediately. Up, uh, up the board. Why not? But then uh, your, your queen is a bit yeah, well, awkward queen, here. Okay, well, let's it's say not awkward. bishop b7. So you're trying to uh, pick that up, knight c5. Mm -hmm. And this is similar to the, the sort of play that we were seeing. Um, well, Magnus was, was aiming for uh, a few days ago. Mm -hmm. 
Do I have... S well, this bishop is certainly um, very passive, but can I uh, make... Ah, no, I cannot make some tactics work here. Okay, bishop d6. Yes, oh, that's a good idea. Then I want to play queen h4, of course. And you want to deliver checkmate. Mm -hmm. And activate. Yeah, that's uh, that's dangerous. I mean, bishop, bishop, so. bishop takes h2 as a threat mm -hmm. immediately. So, um, and there you would have a lot of activity. So yeah. maybe I need to be a bit more careful with uh, with white. So how and I'm just wondering whether I should mm -hmm. play bishop b3 as you su okay. suggested. Yes, that's, that's what I thought. That after bishop b3, I. I was not sure how to continue because maybe mm -hmm. Queen A3 is already a threat. I still have yes, yes. Rook 2 but um, then Knight somewhere G3 yes, or something. Knight G3 uh, where and okay, we'll pick yes, it up. yes. Let's see, Queen A3. Okay, let's see. We'll make a pass move. Then Queen A3, Rook E2, Knight G3, Knight G3 or Knight and C3. the Rook is gone. It's gone. Okay, so after Bishop B3, I think uh, uh, this Rook is trapped. Mm, okay, so that was uh, so a bit B's ambitious. Bishop e7 could be a move instead. Yes, bishop e7 immediately, let's try. No, I mean takes and then bishop e7. I mean, it's not that easy to... No, after bishop b3, I want to start with bishop e7 first. Maybe. Ah, yes, okay. So I, I want to keep an eye on this one, because now I simply threaten rook e8 and rook b8. Yeah. Okay, queen a5. Mm -hmm. The point being if rook takes b2, we've got the same idea. Yes, bishop bishop b3, b3 and queen c3 starts to come in. Mm -hmm. And Sergei went for bishop g5. Of course he of did. Course. What so else is mm -hmm. he going to do? We're doing pretty good when, oh, yeah, when well, we don't have to blunder. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. When it's just sort of... Making random developing moves, we're, we're pretty good. Well, we are the oldies. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But you know, Sergei Shipov, um, I, well, I've noticed because I observed him uh, before he starts the commentary, he plays every day for one hour just to, you know, to st start his mind, you know, before the commentary, and do, he does some tactics. You mean you didn't play some chess today? No, <laughs> not yet. You see, I did. I played several games already this morning. Well, I've analyzed I, games. I, I had to be sharp because I'm in the studio with you, Almira. I need to be on my toes, tiptoes, ready <laughs> to... Oh. Have you, what Impress you with my tactical acumen. So what skills have you brushed up? Brushed up? Yes. I just played some Blitz. I played some Blitz. Puzzle Rush? No, I don't no. do Puzzle Rush. No. Okay, let's see. Uh, bishop b7, queen a5, and then... Um, I don't know what to do with this bishop. Yeah, that's, right uh, that is your problem. And this position really could be uh, better for white. Um, Seriously better for white. Uh, the, the A-pawn hasn't moved yet, but mm -hmm. um, it could start moving fairly soon. Queen C3 and then starting to advance. Mm. Okay, so uh, what's, what is the alternative here on bishop g5? Then we tried h6. We tried uh, bishop... So uh, we tried castle. Uh, we haven't tried the immediate bishop b7. Is this just a transposition? Yeah, we, we, I think we did. No, we did castle. Uh, castle knight e4, bishop b7. Here I don't allow bish uh, knight e4. Oh, right, okay. So, you know, this is no longer possible. So if I play bishop takes f6. Mm-hmm. And then what? Well, 
I doubt he wants to take GTX yeah, F6. Yeah, well, uh, Mor- I no, think Morozevich would play GTX yes, F6. Yes, of course, you have this similar it. idea yeah. in the French, but the thing is, your bishop is very badly placed on D7. You, you need uh, it to be here on this diagonal, so if, you, if you can... Pl- place it there but um I should point out because uh, not everybody knows Alexander Morozevich a very original player mm-hmm. um, well he has a lot of original ideas in yes. the openings and not only in the openings don't see very much of him these days is he retired or something uh, but he was here was he? Yes. Oh, I didn't <laughs> notice. I didn't, he played. <laughs> Must have gone home early. <laughs> no, How you know, many rounds did he uh, last? No, but he was working um, for some other broadcast. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. Okay. And Very actually, uh, well, uh, I have a few stories uh, for you, but now that you've mentioned Alexander Merzic, you know, uh, first we met uh, in 1989. Yes. We were playing this team tournament, um, which was very important, the Soviet Union uh, uh, Tigran Petrosian Memorial. And so uh, I was playing on the uh, boys' board. So the last boys' board, uh, I was facing Alexander Morozevich. <laughs> <laughs> and he played uh, an incredible game, which I still remember. Oh. Yes, in the uh, Fortnite Sicilian with uh, Bishop B4. Knight DB5, Bishop B4, mm. A3, and it was a positional masterpiece. It was almost, uh, well, I cried the whole night. I was thinking, why am I playing chess? Yeah. <laughs> but okay, now we know that I've played against uh, one of the greatest players of his uh, time. So, <laughs> yeah. But then uh, it was very painful. There was just a kid. It was just, was just, it was just a, kid. a kid. So that was the Petrosian R- Memorial. Yes. Yeah. I remember once, a uh, n- number of years ago, and I was talking to the Bosnian grandmaster, Ivan Sokolov, and he was complaining to me. He said, you know, I've never been invited to the uh, Nidorf Memorial in Buenos Aires. And I said to him, um, that's because Nidorf isn't dead. <laughs> If you're calling it the Nidorf Memorial and he's not dead, you're probably not going to get an invite. But uh, anyway, talking of great Polish players, Miguel Nidorf, Polish and then subsequently Argentinian. Okay. We have Bishop B7 on the board. Okay. It was our last, like, third try in this position. And let me see if um, we have a few moves in uh, Magnus' game. Yes, actually, he played ninety six. You remember I mentioned this idea? Okay. Let's have a look at that. Let's, have, that a, let's have a look. Peter Swidler is, is um, mentioning this in his book. Okay. So this, uh, let me check. With a few games okay. here. Okay, I'll make the mm-hmm. moves. So, knight e5, bishop e2. Yeah, I think we've... Uh, D5, knight yeah. e5. They were seen these things. So, bishop e2. White is supporting the advance, mm. h5. But also, I think he's getting ready, isn't he, with bishop e2 that should... Black play e6. Can he continue with f4? I presume that that must be an idea. Yes, you have to. You have to keep an eye on, on this square. Of course, that's why the the only game I've seen, okay, played by Adiban with White, continued here. Um, bishop b2 and h5. So, yeah. that's preventing f4. I would have this very nice outpost on g4. I don't think that F4 is... No, no, no. Yes, F- yes, F4 yes. Is, mm-hmm. makes no sense at all. There. I'll tell you what happens here. after H5. The move Knight F3 makes much more sense now. Mm-hmm. And then if to take, you can consider uh, taking with the G-pawn and using that as a battering ram. Okay, Knight F3. G3, I can tell F3. you're not impressed with this idea. But what do you think? Um, can I try 
C6. You can. Oh, you can. Because here I don't want to play E6 probably. I want to go for C6. Yes. Mm. Yeah, maybe it's maybe it's good. That's a double-edged position. I mean, sometimes these things can work out very well for white with the double pawns, uh, although it's not that easy to affect an f4, f5 break because you're giving away a square. But the one thing is that uh, why I wanted to play c6 because, of course, I'm trying to anticipate um, white's Knee development. Yes, castling. you castle in long. So yes. it, would it be easy for you to castle long here? Not so easy. Because then I suspect I my, my king I will, I my will, king will remain in the appro center? approximately in the center here. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Um, C6, how can we continue? Well, let's say bishop b3. And Maybe it's not a very good idea. Maybe this whole thing is not and a then very C good... And takes d5. Yeah. Okay, Magnus actually goes for h5, so probably he was aware of yes. these few games which yes. were played. And then can how I, did they can continue? Can I ask a really stupid question here? I'm, I'm just wondering. Well, bishop... F4, is that a really, mm -hmm. is that really stupid? Uh, I didn't oh. play bishop g5, just to, yeah, so I'm just you wondering. have two, uh, two options here, bishop g5, and you want to try I'm bishop just, b4. I'm just wondering, can we take that, or does that make no sense? I mean, you want to take here? Yes, yes, and like I, I want to get... I will not allow you. Well, maybe you will allow it. It's not clear to me that... Um, it's bad, but uh, I would then get a rolling queen side. Do you under yes, understand? Yes, of course. Understand. Mm -hmm. So let us suppose here my idea is something like this, and this is the basic idea. I don't know whether I should play that immediately. Probably not. But, but uh, why can't I stay with Nart? Knight F D seven here. Because, you can because you I can. don't want to allow this. Uh, well, well, I'm not Bishop sure. Four is a very interesting idea, yeah, but well, now that uh, okay. But now Queen D two makes more sense, and you've put your um, your knight on a slightly two? artificial mm -hmm. square. I could play Knight H three. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying you've placed your pieces in, in an artificial manner. Yeah, it's a very interesting suggestion. It reminds me also uh, of a line in Pirts of Imtsev where you, well, you provoke h5 with h4 and then you go knight h3. Yes. And then you also play f3, you know, sometimes knight g5 or knight f2 and g4. Yes, sure. So then... Uh, I just think you've committed yourself prematurely with that. With knight that. fd7. Yes. How can we continue here? I don't know. It was you who put okay. the... Okay, a6. This is uh, a typical plan here, so let me try this one. All right, a4. No, then knight c5 yes, is possible. Yes, knight c5 is possible. Mm -hmm. Because I can always take with my bishop now on e5, mm -hmm. of course, so... So if I play knight g5 instead... Mm -hmm. So, uh, just to confirm that, it. no, because I've seen uh, a, a comment, but just to confirm that this is a pure human analysis, we're yes. just doing this on this board because that's how the moves appear on the screen. <laughs> yes. Um, and Nigel is simply waiting for me uh, to blunder. To blunder, of course I am. <laughs> and that's what we, we do. We play, uh, we play some blitz chess afterwards. We had spectators, didn't we, yesterday? We had quite a lot of spectators for our little blitz match. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, I have a question for you then. Do you play better when you have spectators and you're playing on the scene, you're supported uh, by your fans, or you feel a lot of pressure? For example, who is, uh, who is the underdog today? Is it uh, young Krzysztof Duda? Uh, because, well, he is... He just qualified for the candidates, by the way. So, 
he's and Sergei is playing on his uh, home soil. Yeah, I, I would still probably put uh, Karyakin as the the very slight favourite in this match. But I, you know, I don't. <laughs> can go either way, certainly can. I don't think there's a lot in it. And, uh, and Duda is he's clearly an improving player anyway. So uh, I just think Kayakin has been in good form here. He's looked very determined and, and organised, yes. mo motivated. So I, I'd probably give him an edge. And so... What, what happened? What? Queen A7 happened. Ah, so he took Queen A7 and they fixed... Okay, draw was agreed. Okay, so then we probably will have young Shishtov Duda in our studio uh, very okay, soon. Okay, let's, uh, let's show yes, that. But let's, that's exactly uh, the line that we've analyzed uh, before. And then, uh, okay. well, he went for, uh, for a draw. Strange choice, I think. Uh, was he surprised Sega. by I think I, I think Kayakin was surprised. Mm -hmm. And he couldn't find his way. And I think he was disappointed because he had, you know, he had a very specific idea in, in mind. He played very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And then Duda played, I, I don't know, third, <laughs> somebody will tell us, a third choice move or... Or, or whatever, and he suddenly couldn't find his his way. He didn't. He felt uncomfortable, and or maybe he just fancies his chances in the the rapid chess. But I I wouldn't mm -hmm. be so confident if uh, if I were him. Nigel, so coming back to the spectators, so are you playing better? Ah, uh, what. So we were talking think, about the Olympics yeah. also, you know, there were no spectators. It was such a strange feeling uh, for the athletes. So how do you do I think in such I, conditions? I, I, th I prefer having spectators, definitely. I, th I think. Um, but, I mean, it, nowadays we have problems. We have problems with um, uh, electronic cheating. So... Um, we can't have people very, very close to the, the games. Everybody needs to be checked uh, with these uh, scanners. So, um, was, are you familiar with the expression, a damp squib? No. Uh, um, yeah, this is what we call a damp squib. <laughs> a squib is an explosive uh, device. And this is a, a basically a, a firework that did not go off. So today's g game was a damp squib. Uh, not a squid, that's calamari. That's what you eat on the, uh, in the restaurants and the tavernas in, in Greece. But I am going to disappear from the studio. Yes, and we have a very special guest. Young Krzysztof Duda is waiting. So I uh, oh. like addressing all the Polish fans there. Just uh, stay. Uh, uh, we're having it, the tiniest of breaks, just a technical break. And um, uh, we'll be back. We'll be back.
Uh, welcome back, uh, dear chess friends. So, um, the hero of this tournament, Young Shishtov Duda, has joined the studio. Young Shishtov, uh, hello. Uh, hello. All, all your fans, uh, your family, everyone is watching. Uh, first of all, please tell me, how, do you, how did you feel? Because we didn't have the chance to ask you after your victory yesterday. Yeah, I felt exhausted, to be honest, and was kind of kind of shocked um, because um, I had never imagined that I can beat Magnus with black. Like, um, prior to that tournament, I had half out of five against him with black pieces. So, yeah, basically the point was to, um, yeah, to, to survive with black. Yeah, but somehow, I mean, he misplayed the position after the opening and, yeah, and got, I got my chances. Still, Almost, um, almost destroyed it, but luckily for me, this Bishop Man game wasn't the trivial for him either. So, yeah, very, very crazy, intense game. But then, like, did you dance in your hotel room? <laughs> what did you do to <laughs> oh, celebrate? Uh, You've qualified <laughs> for the candidates. Yeah, actually, you know, um, like well, it, didn't occur, you it, didn't, it didn't occur to me like uh, <laughs> for many hours, to be honest. Uh, no, I actually, I was aware that I have to. Focus because um, yeah, there is final to be played today and tomorrow. Um, yeah, so I didn't have that much time to celebrate. Mm, yeah, I will celebrate after the tournament, I guess. Okay, I think the whole nation is waiting for you, <laughs> Young Shishtov. And let's get back to this game. Uh, <laughs> first of all, where you, well, it was a very short one. Yeah. I'm I'm not sure. Well, that you. We actually analyzed sort of. We were trying to understand mm. the opening. So, uh, first of all, was it a surprise for you here? Sorry, I will. Um, let's get the the board because uh, after knight c6, uh, Sergey played knight e5, rook b8, and Knight c6 here, so were you surprised with this move order? Yeah, I was, to be honest. Yeah. Especially with combination of rook d1 next. Mm -hmm. Because Magnus played against me. Uh, rook d1 first. Rook d1. Yes. Yeah, I don't remember if it was 2019 or 2020, Vaiganzi. Yeah, and uh, I think rook d1 is like. Um, I mean, more flexible for white because he can take on c6 whenever he wishes. Mm -hmm. And yeah, also d5 might be on the agenda. Yeah, I'm not going to say what. Yes, yes, of course. So you, <laughs> well, well, but still, it was yeah. uh, this move order was a surprise. Yeah, okay. I, I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, knight c6 was. I don't, I don't know what happened. I mean, yeah, because it seemed like preparation, of course, because he's mostly an e4 player. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but obviously, I played this Vienna here uh, like two times against uh, Alexander Grishchuk and Magnus Carlsen. So, yeah, obviously, that was a target as well. Yeah, maybe he expected I would um, yeah, have just changed, I mean, the opening or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I had analyzed it pre pretty properly, so... Uh, so you <laughs> you had this position on the board? Uh, no, no. I mean, after knight takes c6, b takes c6, I don't, didn't, didn't remember, but uh, exactly. But I mean, I don't see a point, to be mm -hmm. honest, for white, I mean, of this continuation, because, uh, because like here, I can castle, mm -hmm. and uh, that would transpose to my game against Magnus. Um, yeah, but I can just play bishop b7, and what's the point? I mean, <laughs> for him, I really have no idea. Oh, maybe, maybe it surprised him actually that uh, yeah, I played this one one more time. Um, yeah, because I actually expected queen takes a7 here straight away because I don't think white has anything. Like, um, yeah, usually he is like on time with queen takes a7, queen a4, and queen c2 back. Like it's usually slight edge for white mm -hmm. in such scenarios, but. Um, yeah, but here it's not not easy for him to do. So, yeah, bishop g5 first is also, of course, normal. Yeah, here, yeah, he could have played uh, just maybe bishop b3, I guess, because now queen takes a7 is an option. Because if I play, let's say castle, yes. queen takes a7, there is no perpetual, queen yeah, a7 because there is queen a6, a6, yeah, queen. that's the point of bishop b3. But I guess. Um, yeah, I mean I. Still, I can do like, many things. Okay, uh, no, no, no. Please yeah. keep it, keep it to yourself. No, no. Of I mean, the, this is the, the specifics of this format, uh, and because uh, you could also play tie breaks. There are so many games. Mm, yeah, and, uh, yeah. You could actually play, I think, up to nine games against uh, one opponent. Mm, yeah, hopefully so. it won't be the case, but <laughs> who knows? <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, here, Sergey decided not to mm, risk yeah. it, and he went. Yeah, for I expected him actually to take on a7, a set move earlier, but didn't make much difference. So, 
Yeah, so pre I'm pretty surprised with this game, to be honest. But, but are you happy with the result? So, yeah, of course. I mean, actually, I need a break. I mean, and such game, you know, is kind of good, especially with black pieces, of course. Um, yeah, it's vital not to uh, not to lose uh, in the knockout format, and it's much much easier to do with black than with white. So, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm sure so I'm happy. What impressed us um, is that you were playing with a lot of confidence. Uh, even you were pressing well in all of your matches, but especially against uh, uh, Magnus Carlsen, you had absolutely no fear. And well, you had to beat him to qualify for the candidates. Did you work? on the psychological aspects. Yeah, thank you. No, I, I didn't. Like, um, I don't know. Ex I'm actually kind of tired and I mean, I'm not so emotional, I guess, as usual. <laughs> that's, that's the reason. Um, yeah, honestly, I have no idea. No, Magnus, I mean, obviously he had like a good score uh, prior to our match, but um, I think he didn't play like um, his best chess ever here. So obviously there were chances. Obviously, he was a favorite. Yeah? He's a world champ, after all. But um, yeah, it was interesting. It was interesting uh, fight, and yeah, and I was pretty upset at first to play Magnus in semifinals because it's like you know. But after that, I still, uh, even if I uh, had lost, I still would have chance yeah, to uh, to qualify to mm -hmm. candidates by winning the last match against uh, for the CF. Yeah, luckily for me, it uh, didn't happen. So. Yeah, no, I mean, it's. I don't understand uh, why I'm in such good form here, to be honest. Like, it's kind of a surprise to me. I haven't done, like, anything, you know, uh, special to, <laughs> I mean, different. But sometimes <laughs> so you need a miracle. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> all I have no your, idea. All honestly. your hard work, uh, well, yeah. is rewarded, you know, in a very un unusual way sometimes, but I think you deserved it uh, very much. <laughs> and, you. young Krzysztof, I have a small surprise for you because, um, uh, well, you have the whole country behind you, mm -hmm. and of course they wanted to hear a few words in Polish from you. So if you could, so I prepared a small sentence. Uh, let's just uh, <laughs> because I, I, you know, I have, uh, I prepared so something like. Um, to było wspaniałe wszystko. Gratulacje, ogromny sukces, and then wszyscy ci w Polsce kibicuje i co. Chciałbyś im powiedzieć. Um, a, dziękuję bardzo wszystkim za kibicowanie. Jesteście wspaniali. Wielkie dzięki. E, bardzo mi miło. I dziękuję za zaufanie. I w ogóle jesteście ekstra. Ok, thank you so much, young Krzysztof. Yeah, uh, good luck uh, in this match. And I hope that we will have you back once again in the studio. Yeah, thank you. Welcome back. Almira, 
your <laughs> Polish was perfect. Absolutely. Well, it sounded so to me. I, I'm not that I'm an expert on Polish, but oh uh, my God, you know, I've prepared uh, for uh, for a while, you know. I've, <laughs> but uh, well, you went to some mountain retreat yes. and uh, and you were taught but, this by some. Polish mm -hmm. monk or something. <laughs> yes, but uh, I really hope that it made uh, all his Polish fans very happy, his Good. family. So let's get back to uh, the game between uh, Magnus Carlsen and Vladimir Fedosev. Vladimir Fedosev is it white didn't here. Did, did he play that? Yes. Ah, <laughs> yes. Bishop B4 was playing. Yes, and good. Actually, Magnus decided uh, simply to castle here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, there was a comment. Oh, sorry, I burst out laughing. <laughs> she was really trying to sell some fertilizers to do that in Polish. <laughs> sorry. Oh, come on. <laughs> Foss Agro, one of our sponsors. Okay, we have lots of fertilizer uh, oh, jokes. Just... Anyway, so Bishop F4, interesting. Yes, Bishop F4. And actually... You see, you see, he do he's not afraid. So he's not afraid, Nigel. Let's have a look at this position. Ob objectively, first of all, um, Magnus has spent quite a while on his third move, and he, then he was still thinking. So uh, Castle was a very important decision. Only eight moves have been played so far in this game. And then uh, what was he considering here? For example, after Castle, uh, well, probably you don't want to take that split, but you said you told me that you want to take on e5. Well, I, I might no. I was no. Let's uh, just. Uh, well, uh, I'm not sure. But uh, the the thing is, I want to be ready to play bishop takes e5. That's more to the point. Okay. But he he's mm -hmm. changed his mind now, which is interesting. Yes, he played uh, well. But let's have a look. Just. Uh, a quick look at bishop b5, uh, d takes c5. What didn't he like? I think then the I will play e6. e6. Yes. This, it's mm -hmm. too, uh, yeah, it's too, too soon. It's too soon. So to, c5, yeah, immediately e6, then e6. e6 is good anyway, I think. And, um, and you're taking, and you've got too much development. So late, you know, just to have bishop takes e5 hanging there, I think could be useful. So just for instance, I, I think bishop f4 was making the c6 kind of ideas less effective. Okay. You know, that's, so it was that, directed that, against that c6. Was, that was more what I was thinking mm -hmm. about. So now uh, Vladimir Fedoseev has, he's thinking and for, <laughs> I mean that's basically that was my little dilemma when we were discussing this earlier. Are, are you going to take with the pawn? Oh, okay, you know, yes. That's and uh, uh, Ni uh, Nigel said that after knight f3 we c could take with, with, the, with yeah. this pawn. So uh, Magnus took on f3. And, and look at him. He's sort of staring. He's got his head tilted. He's staring at it in a, in a strange way. And obviously... <laughs> But Vladimir Fedosev is such a creative player, so this, if someone is going to do this move, it's going to be him. If, well, if G takes F3 yeah, is going not? to be why, played why on not? the board, and uh, then he's going to do this. But uh, perhaps, if you're going to play Knight F3, it makes less... Oh, he's going to do it. Is he? And well, I am completely blind. blind. That's what so happened yesterday blind. during yeah, the tie breaks no because idea what it was going about. so fast. I, yeah. I I couldn't see the board. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, GTX yes. three was played or not at all? Yeah. That's what. Yes. Or no? Okay. Bronislaw yes, no. says her Polish was very good, by the way. Oh. So well, there you. I'm pres presuming. He's a Pole himself. You better not be an imposter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I will. I promise that I will work on it more. Okay. Uh, you know that I'm in a your, perfectionist. Uh, in your mountain retreat. Well, I'm the one who's writing poems uh, here. Yes, I that's know? right. In English, you did your <laughs> green eggs and ham. You did. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it was brilliant. So, back to the game. Ten, ten and a half worth, moves. Wordsworth and Scripture. <laughs> 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 All 
of an ilk. Okay. No, but then uh, you know this. Uh, what did they say? It was um, about Vladimir Fedosey. If, if we are coming to Dr. Seuss, so. Um, it's fun to have fun, but you need to know how. <laughs> yes, that's right. You do. <laughs> so. You do. Yeah, we want. Uh, yeah, there's a comment. We want more fist pumps. <laughs> ah, oh, maybe this. Uh, yeah. This is regarding the game uh, between Vladimir Fedosev and Amin Tabatabai. Yeah. Is this one? Yes, that's right. When yeah, during the game he was doing fist. Oh, it, yes, because yeah. it, I, it was I didn't realize that it was uh, during it was the a, game. It was a restrained fist pump, but it was a fist pump nevertheless. I don't think I would have been that happy if I'd ever been on the other side of that, but. But if you, uh, for example, if you drive a parallel between other sports and disciplines, uh, of course I understand that uh, uh, for such a long time chess had uh, different ethics, but chess players are under so much pressure, so yes. and I'm the person who is looking for so much emotion anyway, so yeah. uh, maybe we should not we, we judge should be, the players. We should uh, be more emotional. We should wear our hearts on our sleeves. We should... Uh <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I can understand this. Uh, maybe it was this gesture was not really a conscience, like in a way, so... Yeah. Um, he was just talking to himself. Well, he didn't burst out laughing as his, at his course, opponent's no, so. move, which <laughs> really would be, uh, may have been a bit uh, off-putting. So, let's have a look. Uh, Magnus went for c6. Nigel, I wanted... Um, ah, yes, I tried knight d7 uh, in the previous line, but you, you said that the knight is misplaced there. Well, yes, because I, I really uh, wanted to yeah, well, open no, my bishop uh, yeah, well, I mean, uh, somehow. Just be careful of your king. Are you simply want to play I queen want to, d2, I want bishop to check, h6? I want to checkmate mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so... Um, um, put, keep your knight on mm -hmm. f6. But then, uh, but then he came... He played this idea we mentioned in the beginning, that he started with c6 here. c6 and queen d2 anyway. Mm -hmm. Should we go for a6? Yeah, I think you... I think you probably want to take at some point... And then, yeah, I mean, maybe now, maybe leave it a minute. But at some point, if you're going to play c6, you're probably going to you take it. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. so these would be quite typical moves, preparing um, a b5 advance. And mm -hmm. also bishop d7 and just putting a... Uh, a rook on the C file. If we can just show that. Uh, uh, with, uh, you mean just bishop B7 and, uh, and rook playing C8. the yeah, mm -hmm. and 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 just sort of bearing down on the C file. Okay, and if we keep the king here, just on E1, what happens? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not quite sure how white breaks through. I, that's an interesting. Okay, let's see. Uh, C6, question. queen d2, a6. Let's start with bishop h6. Uh, maybe you do it immediately, yes. Then, uh, does b5 work here? B5, I've, got a, I've got a question, Almira, if we can go back. Uh, just, uh, to which position? Uh, to the beginning? Uh, one, no, no here, with bishop h6. Mm -hmm, bishop h6. What if I just take that? Mm -hmm. And you take, and I play queen b6. Six. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's one of the ideas actually behind the move c6, that you can play uh, queen b6 or queen a5. So now I cannot castle because... I'm going, ah, to, but take, I'm going to take it. You're you sure? See. Of course okay. I'm okay. sure. Okay, I'm castling then. Because this you gives me... Well, rook g1 is coming with rook g6. pleasure. Okay. I'll take it. Take it and rook G1. Rook G1. And let me play. Okay, I'll play bishop d7. I'll claim this is not checkmate yet. Okay, just a second. This is just a draw or even not a draw. King h8 and you have knight h7. Okay, this doesn't work. The immediate assault doesn't work. Uh, how can we prepare it? 
Can I start so with uh, Rook G? You, you made the polls very happy there. So Super Grizzly says, great, uh, Almira, best regards from Poland. Yeah, they lost to France in the volleyball in the Olympics. And, and, and that's actually, I was on the, 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 the bus with uh, Lukasz Turle, and he was, he was in, almost in tears about that. Yes, and yeah. I, mean, I know how difficult it is, yeah. you know, because uh, one year... Well, the Olympics uh, are... They only come every five see. years. <laughs> <laughs> There's uh, such a special occasion uh, for, well, every athlete, you know, they work hard, their lives are filled with sacrifices, uh, Spartan preparation, I don't know. Yes. Uh, they're, they're dreaming about... Mm. This medal, so I can understand this, of course. But now they can watch Young Shishtov do that. Of course. So, Anagel, and our brilliant commentary. I am trying to find a way to. Uh, no, he's 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 moved anyway. Okay, can it, no, but just a second. Right, Rook G5. Right. Okay, just a second. It's not made anyway. Rook C8 and Bishop E8. I mean, mm -hmm. no, 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 no. But Rook C8. Which one do you think? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm looking in the void for the moment because those are not my moves, uh, so I'm making the worst. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> and then I this my, and yeah, bishops. Bishop, bishop okay. eight. I wanted to provoke queen e3 and then rook g6, but uh, okay. No, no. You no didn't. So. Anyway, he's opened the c file, mm -hmm. which I think is more natural. Okay, c takes d5, c takes d5, but then he, he prevented this plan. He played king h7. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, so he started with c takes d5 yeah. and he prevented, yes, a very good uh, prophylactic move. Uh, he prevented bishop h6. And it's not so obvious for us how to continue here. Can you still castle here? You can, but you... Then, uh, I think bishop d7. Mm -hmm. I think the way... Queen b1. Uh, yeah, queen uh, somewhere, queen a5 mm -hmm. or b6, I don't know. Where to, but where to, do you want maybe, to play b5? I want to stick my rooks on this c okay. file mm -hmm. and then I'll think about ah, it. Okay. Uh, you know, I'll mm -hmm. play rook f to c8 and then I'll think about it. And somehow it's easier for, for white to play, uh, black to play rather, because I don't see how white uh, gets his attack going. Maybe, um, well, here I feel that this bishop should be placed here. So why bishop f4? Well, well that, that's was, a that was your move. <laughs> that's a pads <laughs> move. That was that's my move, of course. Move. Because of course. now I, yeah. I have a feeling that um, yeah. unless you, you're playing I was very happy with way. bishop f4, but uh, <laughs> I've been regretting it ever, <laughs> ever since. The, you know, the more I look at it, I'm thinking... Um, so you start questioning your life choices as well. I do, I do. So that's okay, Queen F. Let's say Bishop B three. But then I don't. Okay, B five is quite dangerous here God. because I don't have a square, mm. you know, here after B four, Nigel. So this is uh, this is too slow. Bishop b3, b5 is coming, I think. And somebody's saying that the name Almira means cupboard. I don't know whether that's in Hindi or Marathi or something. And that's uh, <laughs> Maharati, yeah. Um, uh, well, truth to be told, my... Uh, these names, they, they, they always mean something in a different language, don't they? <laughs> that's uh, mostly... Probably in Arabic, then it's uh, my, well, if we're coming to my original name, El Mira. Yes. So then, uh, yes. Um, concentrate. Sorry. Chap. Sorry, I'm concentrating. <laughs> yes. So B5. Chap, that's very and terribly, frightfully British. <laughs> <laughs> so B5 here, you know, I'm too slow. Uh, Rook G1. No, but Rook if, I, G1. if I'm Rook not, G, no, G1. I, 
What? Actually, this is possible, but uh, you don't even want to try it. So I wanted to open the B file, but no, this no, doesn't. No, 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 no. This is good for this is white. good for white. Yeah, okay. of course. Then just, B file is winning. not possible. Just willing. Even after yes, yeah, this is hanging. Mm -hmm. No, no, this is not possible. Nothing. But I'm just checking you're if you're too direct. If I'm Romero. checking you're if you're direct. alert or not. Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I said rook c8. Okay. Put your pieces on bishop open files. Bishop e3, first. Uh, rook c8. Okay, bishop d4. I want to push f4. Yeah, probably does need that, but maybe maybe black has to slow down with uh, a6. Mm -hmm. Is it too slow? A6, f4, uh, so f4. I cannot believe B5. we have only one game. I told you that yeah. at the end it's going to be uh, the good, the bad, and the, in the ugly. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know. <laughs> Who's the ugly here? Yeah, that's <laughs> also some. No, it's just the Western uh, which came to my mind. So F4 and B5 here. Which yes? one are you, by the way? Uh, well, there's two players <laughs> and oh, you. Right. Uh, there's two players and me. That's it. Okay. <laughs> right. If also, you know, I've, I am. Um, we have, by the way, excellent um, photographers on the field. So <laughs> I've. I had a look at some of the immediate photos <coughs> after young Shistov Duda won yesterday. So, like, he had this, he, as he told us, he didn't realize it. Uh, like, as he, like, he was still there in the moment, sitting at the board, and he had such an expression uh, on his face of, yes. uh, that something uh, divine happened. But yeah. still, so this, and then Queen came up to mind, you know, mm. Mama. Just killed a man. <laughs> <laughs> um, so B5. Nigel, E5, you will go B4, yes? Yeah. Was this your plan? Uh, that's, that's, yeah, that's good. Is it? I don't know. Uh, is it good? Uh, it's a very, uh, very concrete line. Yeah, so, so takes on... F6, F6, and then I'm, I'm just wondering, yeah, maybe I can this. stick, um, okay, so rook takes C3, mm -hmm. you take, we take, and bishop F6, and bishop F6, and a lot of compensation, mm -hmm. the king is very exposed there. And then uh, you cannot play C4 because of rook B8 check, and it's going to be... Quite dangerous. More here. than quite dangerous, yeah, I think. So, but this was a very long uh, digression, so let's see what happens after Queen H7, uh, King H7. I think we have no moves. No moves, no yeah. Moves for the moment. We're going to have to use our brains. I mean, to invent more moves? <laughs> <laughs> That's <all. laughs> Vladimir for the safe, yes, is still thinking. Yes. So. Can we start with bishop b3 then? It's, the problem is that king is, the white king mm -hmm. doesn't really have any secure spot, does it? I've just been contemplating even castling, I mean, Here? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's ridiculous, but and and then I was thinking King H two, Rook G one, blah blah blah. But I I don't really believe it. But don't they have then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. for the moment I cannot play E six, sure. and you will always have Bishop G five, of course, to protect this. But um, um, castle. Okay, so you want to claim that this will be losing a tempo later mm, because I if play you play okay. rook c1, rook c1, and then continue trying to find uh, uh, a harmonious development for white, and I haven't quite got there yet. Then king h2, and our bishop is gone. Yes, yeah. Wanted to show this variation because we cannot. 
improve our mm. night for the moment. So, um, okay, maybe not Bishop H3 after Castle, but this is a, a, a surprising move in this position. Almost, yeah. almost unnatural. It is. It is. It, it is a little bit uh, perverse. And maybe it doesn't make sense as, uh, at all. Maybe black, white should black should play a six for for example. You mean, uh, castle a six. Yeah. And then if you play king h two, I can consider queen d seven. Oh, okay. Not. I mean, yeah, yeah. just then, showing. Then, then rook g1. And then showing uh, then g. Ah, you want to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there are some drawbacks to castling kings. You could get mated mm, very quickly. But still, like, I wouldn't consider this at all. I wanted to play castle, bishop b3, or. Um, long castle, of course. Because we need, we need to. Uh, to move this bishop mm. in order to push f4. Mm. Let's try castle once again. Maybe queen b6, but then I will play bishop b3. So you don't, you don't want to okay, play Okay, so I, 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 I like bishop d7. Mm -hmm. Okay, this, king b1, once again. Queen a5. Mm. This. Rook. Once again. Rook. Uh, yeah. See? Rook. Yes. Let's say. Let's say. Yes. I started with Bishop D4. It was important. By the way, in this line, maybe you could include Bishop H6, and you are not losing. <laughs> oh God! You know what I said. It was apparently Marathi. <laughs> you know, when I mentioned this, it's covered in Marathi. <laughs> I mean, uh, it was apparently Marathi. And the guy saying, what well, is it, a wild stab in the dark. <laughs> so, yeah, there are plenty of languages in India. <laughs> I just happened to make a guess at uh, a, um, uh, a widely spoken one. <laughs> but okay. Very funny. Sorry about but, that. But uh, uh, doesn't it mean, mean salt in Greek? What? Almira? I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is basically. Yeah, yes, yes, so yeah, that's so, what I yeah, saw. Yeah, yes, yeah. as You're far as salty. I remember. Yes, I'm a salty one. Yeah. Um, a salty dog. <laughs> <laughs> Nigel, I will have to ask you to... Refrain from, <laughs> my, uh, from making comments. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Uh, from exposing yourselves, you know, to Inquisition. Okay, okay. <laughs> so Bishop D4, what I wanted to say, you might start with Bishop H6, and b because this doesn't allow this line where my bishop is yes, attacked, so maybe yes. you could include Bishop H6, F4, and then... Um, did we start? Yes, actually, so now after I now played it, now you can play b5 because uh, this is hanging once yes, again. Yes, and so e5, e5 will be, be met b4. by. No, you take. You can take as well. It's also possible. Oh, on where? On e5? You take. Ah, yes. It, okay. Yeah, because of. You exploit yes. the pin. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. And Okay, but here I had an idea because now that your bishop is on h6, I wanted to play d6. So. Okay. We have to find B4. out if this B4. works. We're in trouble. Yes, now I'm in trouble. I didn't have. You're really in trouble. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, this direct approach doesn't work at all. And while we were analyzing this position, Vladimir Fedosev went for a4. Okay, so uh, this is a, a totally different concept. He's I trying think to neutralize I, the yeah, uh, counterplay. Of yeah, Magnus I think Thompson. I think he's. I mean, it's a very difficult decision, and um, I've not been very happy about castling into it. You 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 make Black's play relatively straightforward because these are all pretty standard ideas. You know, mm -hmm. you develop a piece, you put occupy, put a rook on an open file, you play. Queen a5 and all of that. Um, and this way, I think he's 
probably going to play king f1 and king g2 okay. at some point. Okay, just... You think? No, I don't think I'm, I'm showing you, Manuel, oh, right. because I just uh, noticed that Magnus played knight d7. We have one oh, more knight move. Oh, knight d7, that's your move. Oh, yes. Yeah, you, but he's prepared it. He's prepared it with king h7. And mm -hmm. that, that is that a, is big, a, a, big, a big, big difference. Big difference, of course. Yeah. Because um, mm. he keeps he opens, the, uh, oh, uh, yeah, the fianchettoed yeah. elephant. Yeah, oh. that, that's a drunken, oh, drunken <laughs> diagonal there. That's, uh, <laughs> Wait, this <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have this crazy laugh. Sis. Yes. Uh, let's leave it at that. Uh, so um, yeah, that's the um, what they refer to as the uh, that's the Gufeld bishop. Yes, isn't it? the Gufeld bishop. Yes, yes. named because Edward Gufeld. Yes, like who was El Edward Gufeld? Tell us all about Edward Gufeld. He was a very uh, well famous grandmaster, of course, from the Soviet Union. Famous, famous for what? <laughs> <laughs> for meant. placing his uh, bishop uh, on g7, yeah. and also for his exuberant uh, personality. Yes. Mon Mona he used to call it his uh, he had his Mona Lisa didn't he yes, his, his chess chess Mona Lisa games. his great game yeah one player actually I wanted to say that have been um, not regarded with much uh, attention is uh, Nizhmedinov I would feel you know because when I was a kid I was studying oh, his games nowadays he gets a lot of attention oh really I think so I think uh, just say hi if you you know, say if you know Nezhmedinov, he didn't used to be very well known in no. the West. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah, what I Yeah, because uh, I, felt. I, I had a book uh, in Russian with a lilac cover. Oh, uh, I have uh, just you, you know that you yes, know the of one. Yes, this series. And uh, it was uh, a lovely book on on Nezhmedinov, who had a great score against Mikhail Tal. Uh, won some very, very brilliant games. And, and that book, book was given to me by Lev Sarkis, mm -hmm. uh, the um, former Soviet, Soviet champion. And uh, it was a very, very nice present. And I, 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 you know, I've still got it. And many, many years later, they uh, published it in English, which obviously helps uh, in terms of understanding the commentary for me but i i much prefer the original one because that that feels like the the proper book he he was a poor so and so because um as i recall his only trips ab abroad do you know where he got to on his trips abroad <laughs> he got to bucharest Yes, this. Oh, okay. That was yeah. my first trip abroad. Yeah, as well, yeah. So he got to, to Bucharest, Bucharest, and I think he got to Maybe Ulan Bator. Ah, only to Mongolia. <laughs> yeah, and that, and that was that was it. That Not was even it. to Yugoslavia. At no, time, I don't. Okay. I don't think so. Well, I could be wrong. Someone will no doubt correct me if I'm wrong. I've got <laughs> no problem with being corrected uh, if I if I'm in error. But that's what I sort of vaguely recall. Uh, Nigel, have a look. A4, knight d7, a5. Yes. Yeah. But once again, it reminds of these ideas in um, Pirtsu Fimtsev. You know, when white plays a4. The, the what? In Pirtsu Fimtsev. Oh, Fimtsev, yes. yes. That's, that's the <laughs> Soviet terminology, is it? The, uh, that's yeah. why we have this, uh, we can, this we dissonance in, in the opening. Yes, you know, yes. Uh, title. So a4 97 a5 so i think by analogy uh, since magnus didn't play here a5 uh, white immediately uh, well played a5 himself and first of all fixed those pawns and a5 allows black to play then knight d7 and knight c5 yes but now after a5 you he has before. Yes. At so his disposal, he's so he's going to. Uh, well, I mean, this is a very good positional move by White. So knight c5 can be met by. For the moment, 
A3, yes, A3 Rook A3. A3. Mm -hmm. And B4 next. And, and B4 will come uh, sooner or later. Mm -hmm. And um, White is advancing. If White gets all these moves in, he's advancing very, very nicely. But then... Let's have a look. Why not a5 here? Was uh, he he wanted to have control of yes, this square? Of maybe. Might mm -hmm. like b5 can be five. can be played immediately, and I I don't think that's particularly bad. Mm -hmm. Knight b5, for example, if we uh, continue with uh, Magnus' plan, knight d7, and then knight c5. Okay. No big deal. Bishop e3, perhaps. Mm -hmm might just make it difficult for you to... You could play knight c5, but I, I might even take it. So take on c5, d take sure. c5. King f1. Mm -hmm. With a complicated game. Yeah, this knight is uh, very powerful here. Mm -hmm. And you might even start pushing those pawns, no? Mm -hmm. Yep. But actually, Nigel, what I was thinking, now that you stabilized this position, sorry, I will get rid of this. Uh, F5, you want to play F5. No, then. that's why I don't like King F1. Of course, I, as a King's Indian player, I would always play F5. Yes. That's why I don't like King F1 now that maybe you should be more um, uh, consistent and play castle here is oh yes yes that's interesting yeah because uh, you, you're not getting mated any anymore with this way it's an interesting idea bishop d7 mm -hmm. f4 and no you want to take and I bishop to, d4 i yes? wanted to take and uh, do something like that yes Bishop d4. For because example. I'm not sure you're in time for c4 here yeah. and c4 and c3. So, so go, uh, let's say go bishop d4. Bishop d4. Mm -hmm. And continue. Yeah. All right. So, okay, but this is the position we have on the board right now. Are we going for something aggressive here or are we. Knight c5, rook a3, you said. Yes. And then if f5 here, I want to take with my bishop. Yes, I'm just wondering whether... And, okay, this square is getting weak, but let's, let's see. Can, can I go... B4 before still? B4 mm -hmm. still. Knight a6 is probably what you want, strangely enough, because that is a bit... Uh, knight a6 kind of... My pieces are loose. Just, uh, Nigel, I'm thinking about sacrificing something. Oh, of course, immediately. Oh, so oh, let you're me have. So violent. Yes, let me have a look. But okay, this rook is uh, also fulfilling uh, def defensive role. So I'm not sure if I have time to sacrifice something yeah, like well, this. What's What's the idea? Mm -hmm. Bishop okay, D3. Yeah, Bishop D3. Yes, and this uh, this is going to be. Yes. An antique ruin, you know, in a no. bit. Okay. No, no, no. no. That's, I that's, play complete, like this. Uh, that's mm -hmm. completely unsound. But then, no, but maybe you could, knight, do, you could play knight like, well, what, and f5. No, what was wrong with knight c5, yes. rook a3, mm -hmm. f5, mm -hmm. b4, knight a6? Mm -hmm. How do you defend your b pawn? Do you defend your people? Mm, well, maybe you do. Maybe all of that is possible. You can play rook b3, and then after f takes e4, knight takes e4 is a good response. Okay, you, right. that's the, the the point because now your knight is out of the game. Is the cameraman is more creative today. That's uh, uh, indeed <laughs> <laughs> the case because um, there are fewer games to concentrate on, so they can. Uh, well, there's uh, sort of Japanese aesthetics, you know, the ikebana, you know, we have the flowers. But uh, yesterday we um, assist assisted at the coronation of um, Alexandra Kustinuk. Yes. And that was the. Um, 
closing ceremony of uh, the Women's World Cup. Whoa, Magnus! Magnus! What, what happened? Whoa, whoa, whoa! What have you seen, Nigel? F5. F5 was played, okay. You have to announce this too. <laughs> okay, yes, now we have a closer, closer look at the board. Um, what is interesting that Vladimir Fedosev is still uh, very much ahead on time. Mm -hmm. he, he has 20 minutes more. And Magnus goes for a very uh, sharp continuation indeed because he he's going to take with uh, what here? Sharp or suicidal? I don't know what he wants, actually. Rook takes, I guess. Is that what he wants? Rook takes, mm -hmm. Rook and he takes. wants to, wants to meet. Maybe knight e5. Bishop d3 nice. with knight e5. e5. Mm -hmm. That's the tactical justification, because otherwise it doesn't make sense at all. That's his idea. Yes, so that's you, you cannot take, of course, because, because we will of, take on yep. f3, and then will win this wonderful piece. Now that I've worked for a few months on some material for the beginners, uh, I know how valuable it is to, to show those yes. variations. So let's have a look at five. So Next. I'm wondering... Just a second, look at five. If we continue with knight e5, uh, there is nothing else than to give up this bishop. Yeah, this looks very good for black. Mm -hmm. It looks very, very good. But that's, uh, once again, is a very unusual position, Nigel. For example, even for me, it's, it's, it's not it's so it's clear it's how to navigate through these waters. It's, uh, you've got this um, sort of reverse attacking tri triangle, haven't you, somehow. You normally get some sort of spearhead, and you, here you mm -hmm. do it the, the, the other way. Um, I would be looking at rook g1, rook g1. Mm -hmm. as a first move. But then, uh, how are you going to take here? With the knight. With the knight. Okay, then let me start with um, knight e5. Rook g1, knight e5. And perhaps I need to now give some extra protection, possibly rook g3. Is that too much? Mm -hmm. Maybe I just place my pieces on good squares. Is, mm -hmm. that, is that absurd? I, I'm a bit concerned you might go bishop f6, bishop takes h4. h4. So it's a question of whether... Sometimes there are some tactics like... I'll, I'll, I just want to show bishop f6. Mm -hmm. Let's yes. go okay. um, bishop g5. Mm -hmm. Then f4 takes on queen takes f4 mm -hmm. and knight d3 three, three yes. check mm -hmm. yes and bishop, bishop takes, takes here b takes c rook takes f4 these mm -hmm. are the sort of things that pop into my head which is still not the end of the game by, by any stretch of the imagination so what, what, what would they say in the american uh, like um in an american i, I feel your sister <laughs> <laughs> at five. Yes. And then, okay, what options do we have here? Maybe not rook g1 immediately, but on the other hand... I like, I like rook, rook g1, g1 yes. but I'm, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to arrange things. And, and maybe that whole variation was absolutely okay, okay. Uh, Almira. Same so so let's, let's do that again. Rook, Rook G3. G3. Let's and if I uh, simply play Bishop D7 here. That's another 
possibility. But the, I mean, you were just winning a queen in the other variation. Yeah, that that's also good. Yeah, no, I just uh, wanted to have bishop e three or bishop a few possible moves. But then um, or bishop d no bishop Nigel, g five. You bishop know what g was my idea actually? After bishop b three, just uh, can I show? I think it show should work. Oh, f4 and this, show your yes. genius! Then it, uh, I'm simply winning. Stunners! I wanted to play this. Okay, rook you g5. still have rook g five, but then maybe uh, doesn't work. Oh, okay. But is it? Yeah, no, it doesn't work. So knight e5, rook g3, bishop d7, bishop b3. I will wait for it. Let's say rook c8. I want to play knight c4. Yes. Not clear how white is playing. Hmm. So maybe bishop g5, but then still rook c... <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, I'm reading very rude comments in the chat. <laughs> okay, we'll pass, we'll pass. <laughs> oh dear. I will ask, you know, for <laughs> another fellow partner. <laughs> of course. <laughs> oh. oh dear. Oh, demand. Yes, uh, in, in, indeed. So, let's continue with um, our game. Actually, I had, it's a pity that um, mm, the uh, game between uh, Sergei Kayakin and young Krzysztof Duda ended so quickly. Well, of course, no one expected this, um, but probably faced like with a new idea in the opening, he decided to go for a like for the repetition. They had a very funny story about Sergei. <laughs> Uh, yes, but this would we will need the camera because, um, uh, as I mentioned during our interview, um, uh, we first met in uh, in France when he was 12 and he was the youngest grandmaster at the time, and he was coming with his mom, yes. and he was playing at uh, for for our team, yes. our chess club. But then, of course, uh, we've played a lot of games. He he loved to play blitz so much, and then we played this uh, charade. So yes. At some point, he had to show uh, the pelican. Yes. It's not so easy, so actually. So now we need the camera in yes. the studio. Yeah, we need please. the camera in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> at some point, we will get it. It was very funny. That's not the position. Just you need to. Yeah, oh, sorry, yes. Mm -hmm. You're getting a bit carried yeah. away. And rook a3 was Rook a3 immediately. He's giving some lateral... <laughs> defense there with the uh, the rook. Well, what is this? A studio, please. We <laughs> want to see my delightful co-commentator who's about to do a charade. <laughs> okay, let's wait for our... I think the, I think almost everybody's left <laughs> during this commentary. <laughs> and we're having to do the camera work ourselves, so, uh, <laughs> and the sound work. <laughs> <laughs> well, somehow, yeah. But we're coming here every day, and they're they're well, disappearing, aren't well, they? So we, <laughs> well, our crew is uh, well. Where they they're were shrinking. outnumbering the players they at were. the beginning, yes. They but were. now we have a few members left, and that's it. Okay, so here we are. Uh, Sergei Karekin, who is 12, and uh, he's smiling all the time. He has to. Um, well, there is a group of grandmasters, of course, sitting in front of him, and he has to show the pelican. So he's trying something like this, and then something which is flying, and you know, fishes, and you know, it's again, it's no one understands what kind of bird it is. So what were they guessing? Uh, well, they were guessing to some wild guesses, and then yeah. uh, maybe there was a notion. And okay, then Sergey like took a moment. Yeah. Then he took a chessboard. Yes. And he put the position on the board. Yeah, so <laughs> e4, c5, oh, yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> knight f3, knight c6, d4, c takes d4, yeah, knight d4, opening. and yes, Pelican and e5, yes. and then, and then, Otherwise of course... Otherwise known as the Sveshnikov, yeah. Um, no. The Pelican is with e5. Yes, at of that course. Point, at that yes. point, yeah. And then, the thing is, then, uh, 
yeah. at this moment everyone knew, of course. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. So, yeah. <laughs> That's it. so we have only the presumption of intelligence. Yes. But this was it's like a very nice... It was very beautiful. <laughs> that looked like Swan Lake or something. I don't know what it was <laughs> that with that. <laughs> but we had so much Did love. he do it in a tutu when he was doing <laughs> I, I can't quite do <laughs> Okay, please send us uh, some of, um, well, your proposals. So, so yes. Nigel will try to... Um, make you guess a few of them <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> but this is like one of my favorite games yes. so far so uh, a lot of mimes and yeah so the night has come to e5 mm -hmm. as so we more or less uh, expected mm -hmm. but rook a3 though you know it's a he's very important uh, he's defending difference so first of all of course he's taken the rook away from this diagonal then he's defending the knight on c3 maybe the pawn on f3 at some point, uh, mm -hmm. and what was played? Ninety-five. We have a few moves, or not at all? Ninety-five. Yes, mm -hmm. and I'm just wondering now, Almira. Do you? I've got a, a really stupid suggestion, as usual. What do you think of Bishop E3 exactly at this moment, with the idea of F4? But that was our plan anyway, no? It well, was. yeah, but this is. This is somehow better to do it this this way. Okay, now my line doesn't work anyway. Yes. Mm -hmm. Rook a on a3 is is good for reasons I I can't really explain. I I just sort of feel much happier with it uh, no protecting uh, protecting f3. Yes. Yeah, so you there is a tactical defense. I'm so going you to, to take, take with, with the knight. knight. Yes. Uh, yeah. Let me show this, of course. So knight g5 and Absolutely. the rook is lost. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is yeah. um, and a very interesting defense. So bishop b3 here. Uh, and as an oh, Anant Padmanabh Bun says, moral of the story, always have your chess set with you if you want to win at charades. <laughs> so that's probably uh, a sound conclusion. Oh, you also have to think out of the box. Yes. <laughs> so I think it was the only time when uh, a chess board was used in a charade. Yes. Probably. So bishop e3 and what was well, played? It could be, used, be, could, be, could be used for a hippopotamus as well. Yes, exactly. Mm. But you really have to um, know your crowd, <laughs> if I might say. So Bishop B3 was played. We were not uh, off at all. No. Uh, but I'm wondering, is how is the, the structure here? Let us suppose Bishop D7. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, so F4, F4, Knight, knight G4. G4. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bishop, but Bishop G4. G4, F takes G4. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That looks good for black to me. Or, or is it? 92. 92. Yes, mm -hmm. 92. Or is it? Well, and the point of 92 is I want to play bishop d4 and exchange mm -hmm. off this bishop. Sometimes I might and bring... And to protect my, this yeah, pawn as well, knight. of course. Mm -hmm. So knight e2. Also knight g3 sometimes could be good. Mm -hmm. And f5, yes? Then sometimes uh, mm -hmm. f5, Sometimes, yes. yes, of course. But then... Uh, somehow your king is quite safe here. You know, it's protected. Yeah, it looks safer uh, than... Safe well, before. Yeah. Protected and by the, the and, and now, now there is a question. Instead of knight e2, perhaps mm -hmm. perhaps it's better first to improve a king f1, king g2. That could be. Uh, oh, you want to start? Yeah, with start with this because I prefer to keep my maybe e pawn defended at the moment. Do I have some tactics or here? Um, I should open this. Can I play b5 or b6 here? You can. Let's say uh, 
because B5 could be met with B4, no? I'm going to, I'm going to take it anyway. Let, let's, you, okay. Uh, okay, I'll, okay, I'll, I'll take say, it, mm -hmm. I'll take let's it anyway. Let's say B6, uh, yeah, take, take. Mm -hmm. takes, takes on A8, okay, and then I'll play eight. King mm -hmm. G2. And I wanted to play B5, but here it probably doesn't work, or let's no, see. I'm not sure what, what you're... Bef I want to play B5, B4, Queen A2, Rook C8, okay. Unless I mate it, I will probably be first there. Knight E2, mm -hmm. and then the question is whether E6 is a good move, and it probably mm -hmm. is. So now exploit in this diagonal. Well, a very and unusual people position. Saying I should indeed. do some dabbing. Well, if I knew what dabbing was, then. <laughs> What's dabbing? I have no idea. Maybe it's a new... T like, we are so old. <laughs> Maybe it's a term I mean, like... We, uh, we, we have like 200 years <laughs> between us, you know. Dabbing? Well, I know what dabbing is, but I don't... I think they ah, mean no, another... No, dab maybe dabbing in... Um, what is dabbing? Yes, yes, yes. I know what it is, but... Um, is it something to do with goats? <laughs> no, with sound. Probably. I don't know. Let's see. I think it's something to do with goats. Some f f farmyard animals or something. He goes for a four. Did we miss something? No doubt. Okay. We should be four. Okay, let's see. Okay, so he's I going to do it slowly. Mm -hmm. He's going to do it slowly. This so is this didn't work, of course. This was my idea, but in this you know, variation, you simply have always, this. Uh, yes, you're Queen always G3. too okay. I'm too direct, of course. Yeah, too direct. Almira. So um, listen to your coach. You <laughs> okay. So <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Too direct. Too direct. Okay. That can't really be. It's not completely stupid, by the way. Rook takes f4 and bishop h6, and then queen f8. But mm -hmm. that is really, really um, in the style of Tigran Vartanovic, yes. if you do that. Mm -hmm. um, and if you win a game playing in such a way, they hold it up as an example of uh, a brilliant sacrifice for for decades. It's It's in the books for... <laughs> for decades but but if you lose then it's just then a bad lose, sacrifice then if you lose nobody gives a toss about <laughs> it basically and then uh, yes queen of eight um okay we we need to push it for yeah maybe it's not actually uh, completely irrelevant here especially taking into account this book is here for the moment Dabbing is that is that Usain Bolt? Isn't that the you know whatever it is the walk like an Egyptian? Isn't that the one? That's the that's the isn't it? That's what it is, I think. Oh. Anyway, somebody's okay. No, that's like in American <laughs> football. You have this uh, sax dance. You know, if you sack. Uh, uh, well, a quarterback, you know, normally then you're, you're doing some moves. Oh, you know, right, so okay, okay. Something like this. Yeah, <laughs> I've okay. been working on these ones as well, so <laughs> I don't know if... American football, is, is there any sport in between the adverts, you know, and all the stoppages? Is that... <laughs> <laughs> okay, Nigel. Let's go. Here we are. Bishop before is in the board. Okay. Let's get well, serious. I mean, he had no choice there. So let's have a look. I mm -hmm. mean, let's see. If I don't think he's going to sacrifice, but it's not. Uh, it's not absolutely out of the question, is it? Mm-hmm. This should be a queen. But the, the the problem. I mean, we've got fantastic control of of this square, and we've and this square. This is all very very beautiful. What I'm concerned about, from a, you know, what I would be concerned about, is not immediately the fact. You're a, a sack of material down. Um, I mean, just uh, it's. I'm not so sure. I'm getting the.
bishop out in a hurry, you know, because, you know, what's your next move? This goes okay. here, for example. Let's say, uh, should we start with bishop before first? Probably. Mm -hmm. Then, okay, where is your king going now? My king's not going anywhere. Okay. Maybe you have to do it. Let's say you see, now maybe you, you play in a very mm -hmm. cunning Just take manner. this, uh, sorry. Take leave, this. Oh, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll leave them. They're so beautiful, those rings. Yes, you do not allow, first of all, this maneuver. I thought that you um, might sh uh, possibly should start with knight b5, yeah, knight, knight d4. Yeah, but knight d4 and knight b6 might be a good maneuver now. Ah, knight d4, but then... Uh, okay. He's just playing very calmly. What did he do? Just nothing. He can do it later. Maybe that's Oh, it. bishop d7. Yeah, he simply just develops. because he's got a pin, he can play rook takes f4 in a minute. Maybe this is his idea. This could be his idea. He just prepares it. Because mm -hmm. if bishop takes e5... Okay, so let's mm -hmm. consider the... Uh, what is Magnus Gulson doing? So let's try and understand. If white takes, bishop takes, gives tremendous compensation, control, this bishop is a, a giant in the center of the board, you've got control down the F file. I, I would king. feel guilty to call it the compensation. Well, this you just say that. The, the, <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you yes. mean. So, um, so let's say the bishop takes e5 is almost out of the mm -hmm. question. So if he goes in another way. He cannot go knight b5. Oh, he can, because the F3 is protected for the moment, yeah. so can he? Yeah, well, or it he, is dangerous? He could. I'm not sure you need this knight on D4, by the way, but uh, maybe on C3 it's... Uh, well, it's sort of defending everything for the moment, but how to improve white spaces? No, it's, it's, it's difficult. So knight b5 let's say rook c8 rook c8 i mean rook takes f4 is already mm -hmm. threatened here ah you mean if for example if we play well, knight yeah, d4 yeah. Mm -hmm. rook takes and f4, then and then rook c1 mm -hmm. and bishop h6 bishop h6 we have to go and then we have rook c1 Let's Bishop d1, d1, and you could even play, I don't know, Queen I've got a... Qu can we simply go Queen c7? You're probably winning somehow. Bishop f4. Oh, f4, no, no, no. Well, I don't know, it feels winning anyway. f4, Four, Bishop, Bishop g4, g4 or but then f3. f3. Oh, I was about to suggest something that loses. Queen c4. Looks like a massive, mm. massive attack. Um, really dangerous. Yeah. Okay. Really, mm -hmm. pieces are just flooding in. So, a bit more than 30 minutes uh, still for Magnus Carlsen. And with Vladimir Fedosev is starting uh, to spend a bit more time in this phase of the game, in the middle game. So, how, like he has... 40, 45 minutes or something, yes? So for how... And uh, how many moves have they played so far? Maybe, maybe knight d1 is the, the right way to play here. Here knight d1? Yes, because here you keep more control. But at this point, I really do start to be concerned about rook takes <laughs> four again mm -hmm. might not be necessary you could just get good compensation mm -hmm. otherwise queen f8 mm -hmm. control the squares um uh did you want to activate your rook maybe to yeah, play rook c3 yeah, here rook c that's still still we've got that under control on that side of the board mm -hmm. bishop f4 Bishop f4, queen g2, queen d8. 
And you're going back. I start mm -hmm. to go back, b4, mm -hmm. and then maybe rook c8. And then I, I just come round, and I'm just saying, yes. you are dominated. I, I play rook c8. It's a very good positional sacrifice. So these are the... These would be my ideas. And actually, I like this position very much. So I, that's why I was considering even um, giving up this pawn at some point. Let's see, just uh, that yes. would be my last thought, and then we will yes. take a small break here when we were looking at um, bishop h6, uh, sorry, queen g3, queen f8. Can we at least sacrifice yeah, you can, this pawn? You so can, you can and do then, that. Um, where do we go, go from here? You go the other way. You go back to it. B3. It's not, mm -hmm. not totally clear. I think he's going to go knight d1. Is he? Yes, he has. Ah. <laughs> Predict a move. Predict a move. Got it. So... Uh, it has appeared uh, the game is starting to get really interesting, in fact. Um, and I think it's going to develop uh, a lot in the next few moves. We're going to see the full um, breadth of the strategic and tactical ideas of, uh, well, in particular Magnus Carlsen, because he's got the initiative here. But we'll see um, whether uh, Vladimir Fedosev can rebuff this attack and, um, and make use of his um, slender material advantage, which he has at the moment. But the we will... I think he goes for rook f4. Yeah, it's quite possible. Let's just let's yeah. have a last look. Uh, if, this, this game is fascinating. Oh, is he got, is he done it? Well, I don't have, but I think because well, you know we need to zoom in on yes, this game uh, because he went like now they would yes, uh, do the he, commentary and, 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 on and the left and, and he's then just, on the right and he's just uh, replied immediately. It's got yes. to be rook takes f4, but we need to zoom in. Okay, on the now now we have the moves. Yes, rook f4. Yeah. so he's going to do it. Six, he's yes. basically this is the variation mm -hmm. we're looking at. So queen g3. Let's just wait for the last move. Tigran Vartanovich, Petrosian, would be proud. Queen g3, and let's wait for queen f8. Mm -hmm. uh, this is actually a very important moment in the game. Yes. Um, especially for Vladimir Fedosev, because he will have to find the way to continue. So Queen of Eight is on the board. We're going to take a very short break. And Not that short, but we will be back. It's starting to really, really warm up, and uh, uh, don't go too far away. Um, the time this travel is yeah, the loss, Yeah, of this looks mm -hmm. like a, a great game so far. Особняк на Гоголевском бульваре 14 включен в список объектов культурного наследия столицы как особняк Васильчиковой-Аболенского фон Мек. 
построенный на пепелище пожара Грозного 1812 года, он стал семейным гнездом известных аристократических семей и уважаемых купеческих родов. Уже почти 200 лет по парадной лестнице с мраморными ступенями и палисандровыми поручнями, мимо строгих кариатид, хозяева и гости поднимаются в парадные залы особняка. Самый просторный из них – Большой зал, обустроенный князем Аболенским в 1859 году как место для балов, с хорами для музыкантов. Последние дореволюционные хозяева дома, Зимины, использовали его для репетиции частной оперы, о чем напоминает уникальный рояль Бехштейн 1908 года. Когда в 1956 году дом стал центральным шахматным клубом, здесь проходили важнейшие мероприятия мирового уровня до съезда Фиде и матчей на первенство мира. Для тех, кто не мог попасть в переполненный зал в качестве зрителей, на чугунном балконе выставлялась гигантская демонстрационная доска, и за ходом важнейших партий можно было наблюдать прямо с бульвара почти в режиме онлайн. Красно-золотой парадный зал, его еще называют Чегорецкий, место для наиболее торжественных мероприятий и встреч. Во время недавней реставрации восстановлен его вид по состоянию на конец XIX века. 150-летний камин из итальянского мрамора – один из трех сохранившихся в особняке. Рядом с парадным залом – зеленая гостиная, некогда кабинет хозяина дома, а в советские времена – гроссмейстерская, куда имели доступ только обладатели высшего шахматного звания. Здесь юный Бобби Фишер сражался в Блиц с Тиграном Петросяном и Евгением Васюковым. Здесь занимался с учениками Михаил Ботвинник. Самое необычное помещение особняка – мавританская комната. Архитектор, выполнявший задачу по соединению главного здания усадьбы с флигелем, отдал дань модному в середине 19 века ориентализму и превратил служебный переход в яркий памятник Востока с золотой арабской вязью и характерной нишей Минбар. Мавританская комната соединяет Большой зал и музей шахмат. Time to take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board, remember which page you're on, or keep track of all the moves you miss. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess enthusiasts at chessable.com. Chessable, take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Музей шахмат ведет свою историю с 1980 года, но его полноценная жизнь началась после переезда в новые отреставрированные залы в 2014 году. В основе экспозиции коллекция известного ленинградского собирателя Вячеслава Домбровского. Его портрет занимает в музее почетные места. 
фонды пополнялись и пополняются благодаря подаркам любителей шахмат и именитых гостей, трофеям советских и российских чемпионов. В залах представлены редчайшие комплекты шахмат от Японии до Ирландии, в том числе художественные работы мирового уровня. Рядом с изящными шедеврами из фарфора, слоновой кости и эбенового дерева картонные шахматы блокадного Ленинграда и шахматы, первыми летавшие в космос. Самому старому экспонату – шахматной доске из Эфиопии – 400 лет. Есть среди экспонатов шахматы царских детей и подарки советским вождям. Впечатляет богатая экспозиция афиш, начиная с 1937 года. Всего в коллекции музея более 700 оригиналов афиш. Немало в экспозиции призов с соревнований мирового уровня. С шахматной олимпиады в Салониках, например, наши сборные победительницы привезли кубки в виде древнегреческих чернофигурных вас. В залах выставлены картины, редкие книги, в том числе рукописные. В их числе первый русский шахматный учебник 1821 года, первый шахматный журнал «Паламет» и первый в мире турнирный сборник 1851 года. Есть в коллекции музея личные вещи великих шахматистов – Михаила Чегорина, Александра Алехина, Михаила Ботвинника, Василия Смыслова, Тиграна Петросяна. На почетном месте всегда привлекающий посетителей столик легендарного шахматного матча «Карпов-Каспаров» 1984 года и фоторепортаж об этом событии известного шахматного фотографа Бориса Долматовского.
And we're back with an incredibly tense middle game. Magnus Carlsen, the world champion, has sacrificed a load of material. The exchange and a pawn. The equivalent of, in the old money, three points. <laughs> That's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. And f for that, he has a huge amount of compensation, control of the dark squares, open lines, but it's not so clear, I think, Almira. What did, do you uh, did you have a chance to, uh, to talk and discuss the position uh, during the break? Like not, not really. Yeah. I just, I, I, I feel that we're not going to have a long game today. I mean, okay. one, one way or another, somebody is, um, uh, I mean, it's going to finish. So uh, I, I just think it, it will be decided. And I, from a practical point mm -hmm. of view, um, I consider that uh, we've got some more moves. Yes, actually, that was the position. Yep. Um, where we left and knight e3 was played bishop b4 queen g2 and rook c8 yes so magnus is just improving the position of his pieces i mean look at the the bishop and the knight they are gorgeous pieces absolutely gorgeous uh and the white queen is out of play, doesn't really have prospects. White would maybe like to castle, but let's, yeah. have, let's have a look. Castle, if, yeah. if he oh castles, then queen, queen f6, f6, and then suddenly queen h4 is, is a huge problem. And it's not clear how white can neutralize uh, this pressure. So but it's uh, no, just sorry sure, if I interrupt. Sure, I wanted no, to no, no, because no, he, in no, this position G five is also coming, so you cannot maybe. castle. Yes, and I, then maybe. Yeah, no, no. Rotate. I'm not uh, suggesting that mm -hmm. uh, castles is a is a good move. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm showing the drawbacks okay. of, of that. So um, you're always welcome to interrupt me, Almira. Um, Nigel, I had one question, of course, because I had a look at uh, both finalist uh, paths pass yeah paths. Paths to the to the finals so, uh, for example young Shistov Duda had to beat uh, Vasquez, Sivian, Idani, Grishuk um, he played uh, an on one tie break against uh, Grishuk Vidit and then uh, Carlson so he played the tie break against Carlson uh, Karakin on the other hand had to beat Vahidov, Aparin Artemiev, Maxim Vashilagrav, uh, Sam Shankland, and no. now Vladimir yeah. Fedosev before. So, uh, whose pass do you think is was more difficult? Oh, gosh. A lot of good play. Yeah, <laughs> there's so, because <laughs> I was thinking that uh, just from analyzing those players, uh, well, once you beat Alexander Grishuk, you know, this this is really an indicator that you are going far in this tournament. Certainly, uh, Grischuk is uh, a very, very fine player indeed. But would it be harsh to say he's getting, from a chess point of view, a little bit long in the tooth? Well, I mean, maybe also. You know, I mean, I mean, serious, but a serious point. I, I don't mean to be disrespectful uh, at all, but um, uh, and he's he's an excellent player, but um, for this kind of event, which is uh, as we've spoken about before, nerve shredding. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not easy, and I think. You know, a guy like Grischuk is used to high tension games. He's very often in horrendous time trouble. He thrives. He doesn't only survive. He thrives when other people would just absolutely collapse. Uh, you can do this for a certain amount of time. But then um, eventually, uh, I think the tension becomes... Uh, too much and yeah okay 
I went also, down. Mm -hmm, no, I was thinking that Sergei Karakin also played um, a few tie breaks more than Jan Krzysztof Duda. So uh, Jan Krzysztof said that he was tired, of course, and uh, needed uh, a break. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm. it will be very interesting to see how uh, the match will continue tomorrow mm -hmm. if Jan Krzysztof will press. But for the moment, we have mm -hmm. um, Ruxi 3 on the board. Mm -hmm. And how should I wanted? To, you remember in the previous lines, I wanted to play b6, b5. I somehow I desperately wanted to open mm -hmm. uh, the lines. But can we do it here? I I, I would be more concerned about rook takes c3 yeah, and queen and, d8. And, and yes, queen d8, yes uh, just to no, no, because now it's yeah. becoming concrete. Yes, it is course. becoming very concrete. Mm-hmm. Ah, oh, but yeah. now maybe I can. Can I play king d2? You here? can, and so I'll queen take. A5 and I will bring my rook. No, I just think you've got a bad position any, anyway. Oh, it yeah. doesn't matter if I. Okay, rook yeah. c1. I think I can do it. I think I can do anything. Um, queen c5, and then mm. I start, then pu five, start A4, pushing yes. my a pawn. I think you, you're just completely paralyzed, and I'm going to win. Uh, I know people really do like to enjoy themselves in the chat. I don't think Almira is annoyed with me. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. So dream on, you trolls. Please, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Be serious. We, we are... Uh, having um, discussions about the position. We are trying to find our way. Uh, Almira has ideas. I have ideas. Uh, uh, Almira may be wrong. I may be wrong. We, we can be right, you know, I, and that's the way we go. That's how we advance an argument. And also, and, uh, I, Nigel, I had one very important point, is that I don't think that uh, you want to see me annoyed. No, no, <laughs> I'm I mean, sure I don't I'm want to see you <laughs> annoyed. It would probably be uh, <laughs> terrible, you know, but uh, I haven't felt that in the slightest. But I it's could, a, I could be very you know, dangerous. Just, uh, no, I, I, have, I have no <laughs> doubt at all. But, uh, yeah, very... Uh, interesting. He's taken, yes, he and, I, and I think Queen D8 is probably going to be the the move. I think Magna. I'm going to stick my neck out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say um, Magnus Carlsen is going to win this game, despite being loads of material down. Well, actually, if he wins a pawn back, he's not mm -hmm. that much material down any longer. So, queen d8 here, and... Um, ah, queen d8, maybe he can play a6. Okay. It doesn't matter, Some, I'll take somehow it. Somehow he I'll will take, take it. let's say, queen I'll d8. Take it. I'll take it. a6, okay, just do something. Um, completely strange. Okay, how are we bringing our queen into play? The queen is just out. Mm. Ah, we forget. No, no, but we can castle. Wait you a can. second. Yes. So, yes, we forget about this. Uh, queen d8. Maybe we should castle here. Okay. Queen a5. And... Can we play something like rook b1 first? You can B6, mm -hmm. B6. I just feel that there's basically uh, nothing happening. You're, you, you, you don't have any control over the position, and I'm munching your, your, your pawns. I've been very cruel because I'm giving you the white side of this mm -hmm. position uh, because uh, I'm sure you wouldn't take the <laughs> white side of this position. But um, this is our discussion. This is our um, analysis. And uh, I think both of us, yeah, would uh, we would grab the, uh, the, uh, the black pieces immediately. Mm. Um, the problem is... 
Come on. Uh, can I? No, can see. Yeah, you yeah, want. I, I, yeah, I'm you, to, yeah, yeah, to Queen find F1 some, is is a good move. It is a good move. It is a uh, an excellent try. Um, because. Uh, and because you want to... Well, first of all, rook a1, now is the yeah. threat, and maybe uh, knight g2 is an... Um, yes, but knight g2 one. is not a, a big deal, in fact. So I've queen c3, perhaps. Because I was thinking about uh, queen h1 and knight g2 in some previous lines, mm. but it was very artificial, didn't work. Well, in my head, at yeah. least. So, um, but what are you going to do? You will take one f3? Like knight g2, knight f3 works here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. queen c3. What is our position for the moment on the board? Mm -hmm. This one b6, queen f1, queen c3. And actually, um, Magnus played queen c8. It's also possible. Oh, he's attacking this pawn immediately. So I think his idea is he wants, I mean, he's so confident about the control he has in this position that this is, uh, he, he wants to force. C4? Or King, well, D2, King D2, I, I think, think really. That's C4 was played. C4 mm -hmm. was played, Queen C5, I guess. Yes, now Queen C5. Well, I guess he's going to castle. To castle here. Ah, okay. This He's is got to castle. He's got to castle here, and and I think Magnus will take on take a on five. A take on a five. Mm -hmm. And he, yeah, he will. Whoa, 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 whoa. What's that? Let's go back. Uh, C four. Wait. Let's go back and see what that he B5 was played. Oh, okay, B5. Mm -hmm. That is quite remarkable. So Magnus is so confident of his strategic mastery here that... <laughs> what I find surprising is that Vladimir Fedosev replies well, almost, I, uh, almost yeah, but I, th I think that's like fair enough, mm -hmm. I, uh, actually, because um, A takes B6 mm -hmm. is going to be the right move. Then uh, the, the question is, uh, because if he's taking the queen, is, is coming in, it's coming in to C3, is it? No, but um, for example, can I castle? I didn't want to take. I wanted to castle to use the... Bishop, ah, H3, Bishop H3. H3. And okay. this is the whole point, the whole point of putting his queen on C8. Queen D8, yes, the, and queen C8, uh, That course. he keeps uh, the bishop and the queen on that diagonal. Okay. And, and, and after pff, king, queen H1, I take your rook. You can, I mean, you're, yeah, you're well, just you take, you're, you're on just take on C4 mm -hmm. and you just resign. I wanted to play Rook C1, but unfortunately, no, you just, this is just no longer possible. just resign this position. Mm -hmm. So he took on B6. But Nigel, on the other hand, why uh, Magnus didn't want to simply to win this pawn on A5? I think he wants to stop him castling. I think it's as straightforward as that. Because once he um, takes the rook, I mean, he's hardly any material damage. In fact, the so let's let's just consider this. Um, Bishop H three. The queen must go here. He's done. He's done. Queen G one. Oh my goodness! What a horrible move. That cannot. Oh, he's trying to run with his king. Wait a second. So let's have a look. So he's gone oh. queen. He's trying to run. Oh, king f1, king g2 here. Yeah, but I'm just thinking b5 is going to mm -hmm. win on the spot. Okay, so Isn't b5. b5 going to kill him? Or maybe knight g2. Mm -hmm. Is that? Let's see. Let's see. I'm just wondering... Mm. Uh, 
this uh, looks Nigel here. Uh, maybe I should invade. Okay, knight six bishop. And check. King d two. Uh, king d two. Check. Well, I don't say you're not doing well. In fact, that might be winning. Because actually, if you go to d1, I want it either take just, or play b4, and then yeah, I have this. Of course. But I'm not sure if this is winning. Uh, but then here I have this and a knight of three. So it does it yes, work? Yes, that, that, that wins. Uh, I think Magnus Carlsen is just winning. So maybe you can simply leave this bishop and go for... Uh, maybe queen is six is more precise, but you definitely mm -hmm. go for, for the kill here. Mm. But then b5. Um, should we leave it there? King f1. Yeah. B takes c. King g2. Mm -hmm. And then I will bring and my queen and my rook yeah, back to both. No, yes. no. The problem is king f1, bishop h3, ah, okay. check. Mm -hmm. I think this is the, the real Let's difficulty. Let's uh, see here. Sorry. So bishop h3. Yes. And you're just, just paralyzed. This is strategic mastery. Mm. This is an absolutely brilliant strategic stroke, tactical masterpiece from Magnus Carlsen, because you don't play these moves without being able to calculate the, uh, the consequences. So that's, I, I think it's... Yeah, it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Yesterday he was um, outplayed, quite frankly, by Jan Shishtof Duda. I mean, I don't really have another word for that. Um, fantastic performance, but this one, if he wins, and I suspect he will, I think that's just one for his uh, best games collection. And he's got, it's not his only good game. <laughs> that's, that's for sure. What is uh, he preparing? Do you know, I just have one concern. Um, it's his time management in, his, in this game. Ooh. He has still like uh, no, he's, 17 uh, minutes it's enough, a lot. Yes? It's a lot. It's so. really, I don't think it's a big deal. I mean, 17 minutes is a lot. You just want to be very, very sure, very precise mm -hmm. about your moves. So B5. Oh, Nigel, but then, you know, we were... Uh, can I say obnubilated or not? No. Obsessed? Obsessed? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was a very nice word. I've got absolutely no idea what it meant, but Obsessed it was... Obsessed with this idea. Like, but why don't I play something like this immediately? That's ah, then, king of, then, then I, ah, yes, yeah, I need the knight on well, G2. Well, yes. queen A2, it's still very good, by the way. Because, okay, in the situation is we had the knight on e2, okay, maybe Yeah, this yeah, is so king f1, queen a2, you just paralyze me. I mean, I mean, what a humiliation. I remember there was a game of uh, Ivanchuk's against Gary Kasparov in Linares. I don't, don't know whether you've ever seen this game. The end of the game, basically, Gary couldn't move anything. I mean, he was just like completely dominated and it, it, it sort of it sort of reminds me although it's a different structure and everything just the utter dominance um. i'd like b5 but maybe both idea work huh? like I don't know. Uh, to, it is very important to bring your queen um. Yeah, Queen A8 may be, who knows, may be better. Um, do we have something else here? I, can, <laughs> I cannot find 
Why to play and move? Like, like yes. Why to play and move? And then after and then, you know, people say to me, two. people say to me, why is it that you you think the person who is stalemate? He's played Queen A8. Excellent. Yeah. So you're doing well. You're doing much better than I am on the predictor <laughs> move. So no, I'm excellent. Not sure. No, 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 no. Very, very good. You know, people say to me, why do you think stalemate should be a, a win? Look at this. I mean, he can hardly move. Why is it if you can hardly move, you deserve a draw? I, I, I don't get it. I really don't get it at all. Because if that would be your situation in life, you would be, you would be lost. Am I right? Or am I right? <laughs> On va saisir le Conseil d'État. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Kevin Winter said Gary had a famous domination game against Karpov. All Karpov's pieces were on the back row. Yeah, and that was the famous lobster game. When Gary, Why a lobster game? Yeah, because he had a giant sprawling lobster on D3. Ah, you, you call... Uh, it was an octopus, actually. Yes, but it, I mean, it's it, an octopus. It was, yes. Yeah, but... Uh, It was referred to as a, a lobster uh, by the uh, German grandmaster Helmut Pfleger, who got a bit confused with his... Uh, well, you know, we talk about goats, we, we talk about lobsters and octopuses, octopodes. Well, uh, but I believe it's all started with gooses anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, is his goose... Geese, geese. Geese? Oh, yes, 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 geese. No, yes, that's what I wanted to, uh, because I wanted to ask, so the <laughs> goose is cooked uh, or not? Yeah, uh, I, Almira, this is incredible because we've been in this studio together for weeks and that's the first mistake you've made in, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> in English. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's pretty good, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure, like, uh, uh, that's uh, all I make, but I'm trying to improve. Yep. Mm. He has 30 minutes to find out if he can make a move here. It's what, terrible. What do you do Terrible. Here? Terrible. So what else can we try? So knight g2 loses. Did we try uh, something like knight d1? Not that it helps. I think you just can't move queen and queen. Maybe a, even uh, check. Can I find queen d2? Queen d2, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. We've, we've tried everything here. <laughs> White to play and move. It's, it's horrendous. So that was, uh, yeah, actually my idea. I like, yeah, so that's it, queen a2, mm -hmm. and then you just stop this thing from, no, it's, it's gone. He's gone completely. Queen a2 stops the king from moving, and you can't move, and, uh, you know, that's basically it. Wow. Ah, yeah. Oh, maybe there's a, you want. there's a that's cunning idea is that going to get him out so hang on a second because in the line we analyzed uh, our king was on e1 yeah okay but if so i play bishop d2 mm -hmm. at this precise moment how are you going to save yourself so 90 oh you go back no well, i believe that's the only move because otherwise we're made ah, so. okay so maybe So this needs a little thought. Okay, knight g2. Yes, the previous variation was uh, a bit easier, but this one, um, the king on the fawn, we, we need to find uh, the right way to proceed. So if we, ch I just want to show them, if this, yes. then bishop g2, then we simply play king g2 and everything is protected. <laughs> so uh, knight g2. Mm. 
Although, can we continue that variation? Ah. I mean, I mean, I just just for fun, okay. just for fun. Okay. Okay, ninety-one. Bishop let's Bishop. let's let's suppose mm -hmm. bishop here and then queen c3. How do you move? I mean, <laughs> I just don't know. <laughs> I wanted to. Uh, he went for queen b2, but probably uh, with the same idea. He didn't even try bishop d2. He went queen b2. And the idea that we used uh, in... Well, he's combining all the ideas. Now he's attacking the bishop mm -hmm. on e2. So probably knight g2 is the only move here. Then let's see uh, if mm -hmm. it changes something. Now he can take also on c4 if he wants. Let's see. Mm -hmm. It, so it looks know. completely lost, but... Who knows? I, I think it, it's sometimes easy to forget how much material <laughs> white is up here. So you, you can actually afford to give up a lot of material in order to extricate yourself. Yeah, but for the, now you're, you have a feeling that white is playing a piece down. Which, I mean, he's playing a queen down or yes, a rook or down. Yes. I don't know what he's... Uh, um, <laughs> yeah. What was played? Queen d2. Mm -hmm. So he will continue with knight g2. And then? How do you bring... I haven't quite seen the the crushing blow here. Can you bring this bishop into play or... Well, my takes f4 is a mm -hmm. big threat. And if he repeats... KBJ500 no, no, he says, Nigel, I believe the term you were looking for is Zugzwangt. Well, I don't know. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's, it's para paralyzed, really. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't think his moves make the position um, any worse. They just, <laughs> it just you can barely move at all. I, somehow I what have was the this night. Nigel, we're not. Night, night I have the feeling that we're missing something. Let's continue. Ah, what's this? So night d three is the move. Yes, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, thank you, Abhijit Gupta. He does know how to play chess. So it's because knight f4, yeah, knight takes f4. f4. Yes, yes, because we were missing it. something very simple. Very simple. Thank you. Thank you, Abhijit. Abhijit has obviously not been in the uh, hospitality room. So, uh, very clearly. So. <laughs> <laughs> nice move. I mean, it's an ugly positional move, knight d3, but... Uh, Seems to win. Yes, and you cannot take. Seems to win on the so spot. Just yeah, that's it. And mate, bishop mm -hmm. uh, d2. And bishop a4. A lot of mates are possible. Yes. This one, you can do with that's this a, one that's as well. well. We've got mate in one. Why do you... No, but this for the uh, construction. Oh, right. Yes, okay. just... Showing that we don't even need that superfluous bishop. <laughs> okay, so queen d2 was played, and I think uh, Vladimir Fedosev um, uh, understood. Well, he knows that he was losing after knight d3, so he went for queen g2. Okay, maybe now we can bring our bishop to play into play what do you think bishop a mm -hmm. uh, well okay the, the um. what do you do after 
Bishop A4. Let's queen see. H3. Ah, Let's Queen start. H3. Okay. Let's start. And queen E6. Okay. Of course, after Bishop D7, I'm obliged to retreat, but. Okay, let me do my usual trick because now I desperately need it mm. uh, to have a f like a different prism. Let's uh, let's do it. Should we do it, Nigel Short style? What if we just bring our king in to c3? <laughs> 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 Queen c1, king d2. Why? I mean, we've we've got an extra piece that he can't. Move. But is it I, possible? Actually? No, I'm serious. I think it might be possible. No, but then I'm when, so, you're, I'm when you're in a six, he can place it. No, well, well, okay. That's like when your king well, is here. Okay. Then maybe, uh, yeah. maybe. It's a bit extravagant. Uh, of no, course, extravagant. But, but he, oh, he's going to move his king or what? <laughs> he's gonna. <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, Okay, let's see. Rook G1. Let's see. Let's Is he going to put his king on c7 first? I think he'll put his king on c7 and then bishop c8 and then bishop a6 and then he'll win or something like this. No, I'm serious. He's just going to put his king into safety. He'll put his king on c7 and then that'll be. <laughs> what a sadist. Is he? Is he? Magnus Carlsen. Are you, are you a sadist? This is, uh, yeah, such a beautiful game, such a beautiful position no, just, game. Just, I just, he can do what he wants. Okay, King G7. Uh, I think we have the Rook G1. Because I still don't have the moves on the board. Uh, I don't see if... Um, He was leaning towards the rook, but I was not yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let's see. It would be hilarious if he puts his king on c7 and then continues. I mean, on c7, I agree. On c3, it, <laughs> it would be a bit too much. Thirteen minutes for well, Magnus. Okay, yes, he's going for Rook G one. So, uh, which see. do you think is the the game of the day, uh, Almira? <laughs> out of the two, where where does your vote go on this? <laughs> for me, this actually might be the game of the tournament. Well, look, it's it, it, it this is a tremendous game. Absolutely tremendous. Um, is Magnus going to run around? I think he will, actually. Nigel, I think he'll put his king on c7. The thing is also uh, uh, what we did point out in our, well, previously, is that um, Vladimir Fedosev still had the chance to qualify for the Gant candidates if Magnus uh, Carlsen would qualify for the finals. Yes. So Magnus lost and... Uh, yeah, that his was, chances he has to well, it's a double. It, it, it's uh, a double blow. Disappeared. It's a, yes, yeah, so. it's a double blow. So he's lost his chance for the candidates. And to be honest, you probably wouldn't like to be playing against Magnus in a for a third place um, playoff, would you? Well, of course. Well, they're playing for the medals uh, yeah. for money for. For Sorry. money, yes, and uh, let's You're not allowed to mention money. It's <laughs> saying, you know, these guys have to make a living. And then, uh, of course, Vladimir Fedosev will have another shot at it because um, he's going to play in the Grand Prix series. And one very important precision uh, compared to the other years is that uh, the two players who are qualified for the candidates and the others are not allowed to play in the Grand Prix series. Yeah, right. So um, right. this is very important. Yeah. So they, in, in any case, they will not come to He's play King F8. Oh, <laughs> Magnus Carlsen, I love you. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> We're asking him in the studio? <laughs> oh, yeah, why not? <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> 
Have you seen this game, Short Demon? <laughs> so Queen H1. Uh, it's a non-sexual love, by the way. It's a, you know, it's a deeply... Um, well, I shouldn't talk about Plato, but uh, anyway, platonic love. Platonic. But, uh, yes. So White is getting creative. Okay, so King Eight. I guess. What else can you do? <laughs> okay, let's see. We brought our king to C7. Let's okay, see. Okay, okay. We We're did that. We, we did that. Then. Um, what if I play? It's still not so easy, in fact. But we need uh, we need to bring our bishop. So yes, C8 to, I don't know exactly, C8, Nigel, A6. I have this idea. He's going to go uh, anyway. This is the idea. I need this. Yeah, let's you need say. it. Yeah, okay. Uh, like, let's say, uh, just doesn't matter. This setup, uh, yeah. I had the vision in my head because you always need to I, have I, this, I distracted this you. dream position. So, uh, let's say... B5. No, no. Let's say, uh, what was the last move? So, let's say... Bishop b4, somehow this. Uh, well, queen h3. No, wait a second. I want, just wanted to... I need well, this. And then I need to play bishop d1 here. And here I needed to play this. Something like this. Is yeah. it possible? Uh, well, uh, yeah. Okay, Except but now it's, I'm... It's, now not going to, it's not going to work. Though, because this... Uh, yeah, is... Well, I will take like this. Yeah, and mate. Yes, and then, so, uh, <laughs> so sort of. <laughs> but then, uh, Magnus actually went for e6. Oh, Whoa. this is brilliant because he wants to simply to have this pass pawn. Whoa, whoa! If it's a take. disappointment he didn't put his king on. <laughs> okay, but now <laughs> you're so forced so. to take. Yeah, it's a so, bit... And it's then, a bit, and uh, then uh, that's how your bishop is coming into play yeah. and you're attacking everything. And then you play your king into d2. <laughs> okay, maybe you're not forced to take mm. e6. Ah, then yeah, you're yeah. going bishop f5. You're going to play bishop f5. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and by the way, if you take take, I can put my king in <laughs> all the way to d2. You won't be able to stop it. I just play my king... Mm -hmm. Rounds. Let, let me draw my happy arrows. Mm -hmm. And then in etc. <laughs> and, and, and I'll win somehow with uh, Queen C1, King D2 or something at the right moment. That's, that should be good enough. E6, yeah, very, very nice. So do we have some charade proposals? <laughs> I don't know, nobody was <laughs> bothered. No, maybe you haven't seen them. No, I haven't seen, I haven't seen, yes. What a game. I don't, I don't think Fedosev is going to be sleeping well tonight. He'll be having <laughs> these sort of recurring visions of this position <laughs> where he's paralyzed, not able to do anything. But it's so frustrating. Once again, you're starting uh, this match with white pieces. You yes. know, you, you want to pressure your opponent. And yes then this is the position you're having with 30 minutes on the clock. Okay. Left on the what clock. a torture. Yeah. You know, we were discussing this yesterday. Um, Magnus lost, but on the other hand, the pressure is, was gone also. So yes, he, he's off. He's playing mm -hmm. uh, a perfect game today. By the way, what if, what's about the um, 
the ratings for the moment. That's what I wanted to Tell check. Tell us about Yes. It. Tell us everything. I wanted to check the live ratings. So uh, Magnus is winning a uh, little bit l more than two points. So for the moment, he is on 2849. You have to speak up. Huh? Yeah. Yep. Okay. 2849. Nigel, mention your secret online games versus Fisher. It's very tiresome that I have to say every couple of days that these never happened. But anyway. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, Magnus is, is there, mm -hmm. storming away. Young Shishtov Duda is approaching. He is 2751 for the moment. And what about Sergei Karakin? Just wanted to check. Yes, he's... He moved up four places and he... Four places, so number... Number 10, ten. in the world, Number yes. 10. Mm -hmm. 2764 for the moment, of course. Yeah. It depends uh, on tomorrow's game. So that's a very finely balanced match, mm -hmm. Duda against Karyakin. And I, I would give Duda the edge, actually, after today's game. I think the fact that Kayakin failed so abjectly even to, you know, put any sort of pressure at all on his opponent. Um, and Young Shishtov was very well prepared. Yes. Well, he yes. knew this line. Yes. I think he knows everything there. And um, Nigel, are you going to play for England? I will take this moment and ask you this question because I uh, hopefully the European uh, team championship is going to be organized this we've, year. We've so. got uh, a number of... Uh, what's he done? G3. Okay. It's a very surprising mm -hmm. move. We have um, various events coming up and uh, they are, include the online Olympiad. Um, I'll, I'll be quite honest with you, uh, although I think in the current climate, online chess is absolutely necessary. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've, we've made great efforts in FIDE to facilitate this because... Um, it's been a calamitous situation in, in many, many ways. Um, do I like it? No, I don't like it uh, at all. And um, the number one problem, uh, Zarkady Dvorkovic pointed out um, many months ago, is, uh, is cheating. And even uh, you have to have some sort of... Um, arbiter that this sort of hybrid um, system I think is the only way uh, but uh, even this is not uh, perfect so um, you know I, I don't know whether I'm uh, ever going to play for England again um, you know if I had to guess I'd say the answer is no um, one, I'm not as strong as I was uh, in the past. Um, I've been very disappointed with the English Chess Federation. Uh, that's another matter. And, um, yeah, I mean, you have to get into the, the team. But we'll be back to normal chess before um, too long. Um, before I get to that, yes, that's what I wanted to I mentioned that you have this running line on your screen and you can see the difference between the third pl uh, place and the fourth place finisher. Which is so not, not a huge amount, in fact. Well, it, it is to me, so... <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so like, it's not a life-altering uh, sum of okay, money. It's let's not life-changing uh, money, let, let's, but I let's put think, it like yeah, that. So it's uh, a very important difference. And then coming back to the um, internet chess, yes, ED5 was played. Um, I, had, I had another question. Even though this, of course, offered... Uh, 
to the players a unique opportunity to compete during the pandemics, but uh, don't you have the feeling that um, online chess alters your vision of the game and in, in, in a way has a perverse effect on you as a chess player? So too many games, you don't care too much, you know, they're playing so many tournaments yeah. and yeah, they're I trying mean, every line. Yes. You play in your underpants, you play the bong cloud, you play, you know, I mean, and, and to be honest, I mean, there have been occasions uh, where I've seen things over the last year where I've, I've had very, very strong suspicions about uh, people during um, online chess. I, th I think cheating is far more prevalent uh, in online chess uh, in, in general. And it's surprising people cheat even when there's absolutely nothing at stake, which is, I find quite, uh, quite remarkable. So, you but know, why I've do you think that is? I, yeah, I think people can get away with it. No, so, I don't mean, uh, no, I mean, um, what could motivate them, for example, when there is nothing at stake? Is it simply to I think it's have a, this it's to feeling boast, of it's domination? A, yeah, to boast about it, you know. Uh, it's very, very peculiar for me. I mean, because you are not like that. You don't have that mentality. And I, I do not have that mentality either. So it, it's odd to me. Uh, I think it's just the fact that people can do it. They, uh, they get that little kick, you know, I cheated, um, the hand of God. You know, if you can get away with uh, cheating, then so be it. Yes, but then the most important thing is probably to ensure the secure conditions during these events. Of course, to yes. have the arbiters. Yes. yes. And to, um, well, to encourage actually uh, the best, well, if there is the best moral yeah. decision, I'm yeah. not arguing. It's just uh, uh, so the tournaments would be a fair play. Yeah. Well, we, we're, doing, play. we're doing a lot of work on these... Um, uh, we're doing a lot of work on these issues. You know, Fair Play Commission have put in huge, huge efforts to uh, certain things. And, uh, I mean, I haven't mentioned this because, you know, for most people these things are fairly um, dull or they're ar arcane. Uh, we had the FIDE Council meeting and we had this massive ex expansion. It's... Um, of the um, the uh, the FIDE Ethics and Disciplinary Commission, and we had a two-page document which has now gone to 46 or 48 pages. Uh, so we are trying much harder uh, to, to to, to um, bring in uh, an ethical side to to chess. Uh, it won't meet with everybody's approval, but we were actually pretty serious about these things. I mean, uh, I must say the document is only in the draft form, but there's been a colossal amount of work been done by very serious lawyers looking at best practice in other sports. Uh, so these are the, the sort of things behind the scenes in FIDE that uh, we are doing and which no previous administration has really taken very seriously at, at all. And um, we're, we're trying to raise the bar to make chess um, a more respectable uh, sport than it has been and um, to make people... Um, I, I mean, I think chess is a sacred game. I, I really do. I, I feel that one has to respect uh, the, the whole ethos of the, of the game. Um, well, if I may make a remark, I think that uh, you are working <coughs> in, in, in a good direction because like one of the other things that I've studied in my <laughs> previous life, and I'm sure that you're going to make a comment, so... Um, 
from the law point of view that um, uh, the situation was a bit peculiar for me because the um, the responsibility during those tournaments cannot lie only on the players. So that's why I'm insisting in all the conditions uh, being secured by FIDE as an official organizer and the arbiters. So, so everything is reunited that uh, the games would uh, be played in, uh, well, in optimal conditions. Yes. Yeah. So let's get back to the game. Rook G1 was yeah. played. Um, Vladimir Fedosev is simply repeating uh, his the, moves. These are d difficult uh, tasks. I mean, look, Magnus ha has a, an overwhelming... Uh, back to the chess. I and mean, we, mm -hmm. we, we can talk about this for some more. Back to the chess. Magnus has uh, an overwhelming uh, position, but actually the real question is how... Uh, to bring the game to a, con a conclusion. He's mm -hmm. gone king f7. How to deliver the final blow yes. here. Okay. Yeah. King f7. Um. But then, Nigel, he's waiting for this Queen one. Queen and knight d3. Yes, so he, he needs this square to be taken. And knight d3. Yes, so he just needs to make a move. King f7, let's say... Uh, ah, but that's why he, he, he knows that this is losing. He will continue with rook g3. I think he has to do this. Mm -hmm. You cannot play queen g2 here, so let's see. King He's got seven, to go rook g3, g3. Th this is the mm -hmm. toughest one. <coughs> okay. But how are we protecting? I'm just wondering whether you you can win in um, in a different way. Just possibly queen or queen c1. What's the move there? Maybe uh, king g2 now. Yeah, king g2. And can I just play take. knight takes? No, I want, I want take. knight takes c4. Yes, but I thought that maybe you can take. Okay, you are Let not me, in a hurry. You know, at some yes. point, mm -hmm. I think I have to release something. Mm -hmm. And and you have this postpone. And I'm going to push. Yeah, you don't have to take, of course. No, no, this is um, absolutely useless. So rook g3 and simply queen c1 here. King g2, knight c4, bishop c4, c4, and then... This, this pawn is just... Yes, this uh, knight is cut off completely, so... Oh, right, he's, he's got a regrouping here. Mm -hmm. So how is he going to finish this elegantly i think the knight is coming to d4 was this played yes mm -hmm. is that right is the knight coming to d4 you mean like this yes yes that would win mm-hmm So knight g2, does that work? Oh, and then now check and then bishop d2 wins. Knight g2. Queen check and bishop d2 wins. Mm -hmm. So he's now completely... You mean like this, yes. He's completely in Sukhsvang. Well, mm -hmm. okay, I take mm -hmm. the piece. What a game. Now, honestly... It's a brilliant game by Magnus. Just, you know, just look at these pieces. <laughs> Do you have that? Uh, you don't have that book by Kasparian. The domination of two and a half, that 2,545 endgame positions or something. No, I, no, I only no. have the studies. 
Yeah, but they are studies. Yes, but it's, uh, it's, it's, I have a much uh, shorter version, no, the one that I, I had at home. Yes. Just to, I bought that in Amsterdam years ago. And it, uh, no, Kasparian studies, of course, yeah, it's like Kas- you're, it's all yeah. when you're Polishing, you see these yeah, positions which yeah. we are talking about. Yes, you have. Um, what is it? What is it about this name? You know, you've got Kasparov, Kasparian, and so on. Is it this part of the world? Well, what? <laughs> what is it? Oh, I, I, somehow I never thought about this one. We were doing those uh, studies together with Levon Aranyan when we were training. Well, right. When we were kids. So. Well, I, I don't see a way for white to continue here. No. Scripchenkian. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, Agababen. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Intruders. In, yes. Intruders in our studio, yes. We had a couple of hoodlums invaded the studio. <laughs> okay, now you got me. This is the word that <laughs> I've heard uh, for the first time, okay. I think. Okay. <laughs> I will have to check one. This one. So Rook G5 was placed. Oh, maybe he wants to sacrifice. Yeah, well, uh, on a five, he wants I mean, to, <laughs> to do not resign immediately, you yes. know. So. Okay, so... Five and then maybe, and then Queen H three. I don't know. I cannot find uh, the way to proceed. So Vladimir Fedosev uh, has Best reached move. the time control. Mm-hmm. Best move. Nigel, well, we have to take something at some point. Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> it's a can real blow, t- yes, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Can we take it and then? We can take. Can we play this position yeah. with Queen the Queen, H- Queen, Queen, H- Queen H2? Queen H2. Oh, okay. Yeah. And look, I still. mean, and look, the position is completely winning, but King you seven. know, I mean, it's not so beautiful as it was before, is it? I mean, it's, it's a real disappointment to take some pieces. You know, I mean, your your opponent gives it an exchange and a pawn, and you're like really disappointed when he does that. But then, uh, if knight c5, I believe uh, white can continue with rook f5. And then let's see if I play um, queen h3. You simply have king f6. Well, but he's taken it. Oh, he's very very disappointing. I'm tease, teasing, of course. That's, uh, as you said, Amira, at some point you uh, have to take something. Let's get the position on the mm-hmm. board. So. No, it's not updating. That's where yesers, uh, that's when Yasser Seran would tell a very interesting story. <laughs> so oh, yes, yes. Nigel, you have to I'm think sa- of I'm one. I'm saving them for my books. How do you have them in your books? Well, yeah, I'd like to have one, one or two. Well, I've only written one book um, at the moment, so uh, out recently. Winning, uh, which is an... Uh, an um, uh, analysis of eight tournaments that I won so um, and but I intend to do some more and I also would like to look at some of my matches as well particularly my match against Karpov probably the high point of my career but I've won a huge number of tournaments and uh, yeah there are stories Uh, there are stories from many of these events may I ask you one question Uh, what is the funniest story that happened to you during your chess career well that's pretty puts me on the spot I mean there were so many (laughs) 
It's like saying, what's your favourite song or what's the funniest, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> funniest joke or something like that. And some of the, you know, sometimes they come out during course of conversation. Um, but uh, to just, you know, give a story like that now is, is not so easy. But do you have a sense of ridicule? Clearly not. Yeah. You do? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that I don't have it at all. So just, yeah. I think that uh, one should laugh ab about everything. So uh, yeah. starting from, well, yourself. So. Self-deprecation. That's important, I think, sometimes. No, I mean, not self-deprecation. I think self-deprecation is uh, self something self completely different. Self-deprecatory humor. Um, that you make fun of yourself. Different <laughs> prisms of once again are possible here, but uh, well, is, is Magnus thinking about knight c5 here, or did he take on g5? Mm -hmm. We took on g5, but... No, no, I mean... But, but queen g5 I mean, this one, or, queen g5, yes, or yes, knight c5, yes, because sure. he's still considering mm -hmm. his move. Mm. Just I remember that once I had to play a poker tournament in uh, a completely strange outfit. <laughs> <laughs> so just, I had no sense of ridicule at all. So, because I lost the bet. So that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And knight. Well, he moved his knight back to e5. So queen h h two. What's the what's the idea there? But why queen h two? Well, I want to make it difficult for you to play queen takes g5, or, or queen there, even I better. I mean, queen h4? Yeah, yeah, even better. Not quite sure what he's up to. What's he up to? Um, queen h4. This is so easy. But what would be your next move? For example, if F4 I... F4 or something, I don't know what is my next move. F4. Mm -hmm. F4, okay, just a second. Queen h4 with the idea of playing f4. And if I play queen c1 here, you will start with f4 anyway, but then I will take. Nigel? Yeah, but I, this way I play. Qu ah, I see. No, because yes, now you're a queen. Yeah. Of, so, and see. if you play, yeah, bishop h3 check is quite annoying. Ah, oh, you mean if you want yeah, to bring your queen yeah, to play? Yes. Queen, mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's that is paralysis. Then yeah, Queen C1 is, is really a good move, though. But then, on the other hand, I'm trying to understand. So, what was the difference here? If we take, let's say, instead of Knight A5, just a second, we take... Queen H2. Yes, that's what is. Ah, we cannot play Knight E5 here because yes. of F4. Okay. Yes, mm -hmm. I think this was his. So, uh, uh, this knight, was the idea. Yes, Knight E5 first. He didn't need this pawn, of course, and then uh, Queen H4, Queen C1. If we are not missing anything. Mm -hmm. Uh 
No, that's very good. Just ninety, just knight d three wins there, so he basically can't mm -hmm. can't move. Yes, that's the sorry. That's it. I mean, f4, knight d3 is, is the right Oh, way. you mean even uh, not yeah, knight yeah, c4? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's even better. Knight c4 is winning. Mm -hmm. and yes, this, yes uh, but this is winning on the spot, of course, because... Well, you have to check. play... F3 you yeah. still have. Just yeah, you had f3, yeah, but, just uh, but, uh, but to show. yes. Mm -hmm. So here, uh, knight d3, you still have f3, knight... Yeah. Four. No, maybe. It was queen d2 is, is killing as well. I mean, good coming in a minute. Yes, but the queen. F2. Queen d2. Mm -hmm. You can't move. Yes, we can <laughs> just, move. Just simply, you simply can't move. I think it's the coming to the end of the road for Vladimir Fedosev. Let me check something. All right. We have a lot of Indians mm. in the chat. Not all of them talking about the chess. But this is a real, real squeeze. Yeah, in fact, uh, there was a very nice uh, variation. I wasn't necessary at all after f3. Just by the way, <laughs> bishop h3 check. Almira, hmm? bishop h3 check was also very oh, good. Oh, here immediately, yes. Yes. But okay, it doesn't matter. I think any move. I'm getting thumped at the moment. <laughs> Almira would like me to give more comments on a position where Fedosev, uh, well, he's running out of options. Well, not that he's, he's had any options, really, in the, the last uh, few dozen moves. And what do you think about the... Uh, the result here, Almira. Oh, actually, uh, that's tell us, tell us about it. Um, where, where we're playing? Where you know the surroundings? What sort of a, an environment has this been? Well, I've been pleasantly surprised because I, well, I've played here for the first time. We're playing in uh, in Krasnaya Poliana. Yes. Not exactly in Sochi. Okay, it's a yeah. ski resort, uh, an hour drive from uh, Sochi, and well, it's not it's, now. Well, it's, it's less. Yeah, it's, it's less. Like it's less. But and it's uh, well, absolutely amazing so just to have all these walks. And uh, recently, we've been uh, so disconnected from with all these lockdowns, you know, from nature. And, yes. Uh, take just taking. The walk uh, through the forest after the game was absolutely amazing, and I had this uh, magical moment. Uh, well, a few days for a few nights when uh, I was walking alone, and then uh, there were a lot of uh, light bugs. Yes. So this probably is one of the moments that I will remember the most. Here, it's absolutely magical. Mm. I was talking to someone last night. He stopped. Yeah. And that may be a surprise to some people, but he's absolutely gone. We will try to find out if uh, Magnus Carlsen 
would uh, give us five minutes yeah, of his that time. Would be, yes, that would be great uh, he, if he would do that. I don't know whether he's... Um, yeah, he's resigned, but it's, uh, I, I think, a, a fantastic game by Carlson. I mean, uh, truly brilliant. Uh, I'm sure the engines will say he could have won it faster, he, could, he had alternatives and so on. But I think the, the whole concept of the domination was the outstanding thing uh, about this game. So uh, an absolute joy um, for us here um, in the studio, and I hope you enjoyed that at home. And I think you can see here is a real chess um, appreciation uh, from Fedoseev because he recognizes his opponent has played a great game, and they're having this extremely polite uh, discussion on this. Um, as, you, as you see, that is total respect from, from both players, a dis discussion on you know, where perhaps things could have been Im improved, maybe some defensive prospects here and there. And it's, it's rather quaint these days to see a, a post-mortem. And in the old days, you would get post-mortems all the time. And nowadays, especially in the, the middle of a, a match, because the match is not over. Maybe Fedoseev will win t tomorrow. Um, then... Um, then uh, yeah. you've got that, uh, then the people were just uh, normally running, running away these days. Um, they run away, they check things on their engines, and it's, it's nice to see uh, human interaction and a proper discussion on the, the beauty of chess. I'm not saying. Players are discussing over the King C7 plan. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Who knows? Who knows whether it's possible? I can't hear the the commentary anyway. You know, uh, when we were working, working on the documentary in Paris and in. Um, in Abidjan, we had a small camera which was uh, always on the table, and then if their players were analyzing, then we could actually hear. But if they were not analyzing, then we could hear their breath during the yes. game, the tension, yes. you know. So if, yes. uh, if they were yes. feeling uh, anxious, uh, it was really um, impressive. Okay, let's wait for a few seconds. So you see how uh, consumed they are. Uh, yes, yeah, still some thought. And that's it. Now grabbing the score sheet and I think on their way. We may just be lucky and uh, get, uh, get, get Magnus Carlsen. Yeah, this, it's not up to us. It's whether the uh, press officer can do that. And Terry Kublashvili is the press officer of yes. this event. So yeah. Let's see. Um, here are the results. Uh, first of all, of the first final game, Sergei Karakin drew Jan Krzysztof Duda. Uh, an important draw for Jan Krzysztof with black. So tomorrow he will try to press yeah. with white, of course. And uh, Magnus Carlsen won uh, a brilliant game against yeah. Vladimir Fedosev with black. And this was in the match for the third place. Yes. So I would uh, now, uh, to uh, conclude, I, I would say Magnus Carlsen is overwhelming favorite to uh, finish third uh, in this event. 
we'll see what Fedosev can come up with uh, tomorrow. Uh, he's got nothing to lose uh, anymore. But this was a pretty crushing uh, defeat for uh, for him. Um, the other match, the the final, uh, I would say that now uh, Duda is the favourite. He's the ratings are there's almost nothing between them actually because um, Arpad Elo, who was the inventor of the Elo system. Uh, he always said a rating difference of 20 points was insignificant, and there was basically, you know, less than 20 points uh, between these these players. And I think there was this loss of momentum, the fact that Kayakin achieved absolutely zero uh, in this, I would say, swings things slightly towards I wouldn't read too much into that. There was a different interpretation, um, which I heard uh, from my uh, Polish friend, Lukasz Turle, who's a vice president of, uh, of FIDE, and he said it's sometimes like this in football, that when you are afraid of you, the opposition, you uh, aim for the penalties. Mm. And he thought um, that maybe it was uh, Kayakin being afraid of Duda. I don't, I don't think so. I just think he technically he just didn't get what he wanted to today. And then he just decided he'd take a pragmatic decision and end the game, grab a pawn and allow his opponent to repeat the position with a perpetual attack on his queen. Nigel, before like we go to our sponsors, I would like to hear your poetry or your poetical interpretation <laughs> of uh, I haven't written our a poem. partners. Uh, oh yes, we have to support in the uh, event. Uh, yes. Do that. So general partner of the uh, championship is Gazprom. Massive, massive global <laughs> energy company yes. fluffy rabbit um, and uh, Nor Nickel um, is a leading Russian metals and mining company and is the world's largest producer of high grade nickel and palladium Fosagro fertilizer we love it, and that's exported to more than a hundred countries uh, around the world. So, um, helping farmers produce the food which we all need, and I'm feeling pretty hungry right <laughs> now. So, Nigel, one last question. So, what would be your sex dance? Sorry? So, if you would sack a quarterback or you win a game, so how would you celebrate it? <laughs> Show me your moves. <laughs> <My moves. laughs> so, that <laughs> was Nigel Short. <laughs> and I think uh, that's it for today, folks. I thank you so much for, uh, <laughs> for watching. Uh, we are going to be here today. I've got a feeling that somebody's going to cut that <laughs> and put it on. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter, I'm <laughs> uh, going to be humiliated for the rest of my life. <laughs> Join us uh, tomorrow for the, uh, the second game and possibly the last games of the event. We shall see. See you tomorrow. <laughs>